So, hello everyone, welcome to Ludo History. As always, I'm Adam, and this week we are continuing our playthrough of World War I in gaming and through gaming in our collective memory. This week we're going to be playing The Great War Western Front, a game developed by Petroglyph Games, uh, extremely seasoned RTS developers that released earlier this year. So we're going to be moving genres dramatically from last week with Valiant Hearts uh, in order to take a look at how a brand new game um, in the RTS genre uh, deals with that memory and what they do and do not let the player do uh, as part of navigating World War One. It looks super interesting. Um, I think there's going to be a lot of value here. Um, and well, that means we'll also be able to talk a little bit about um, the operational side of the war over the next few weeks or next few streams and then some other cultural issues relevant to it um, as usual some disclaimers uh, i'm not a historian of the first world war i'm not even a historian of the 20th century i am however a cultural historian and a historian who's really interested in memory frameworks so cultural and collective memory and so that's how we're approaching um these adaptations uh, there are plenty of great resources for learning the raw facts and dates of the war. I will try and do that side of it justice, but th that is going to be primarily my perspective as someone who is more interested in the memory of the war, um, more so than the numbers and dates and logistics of it. Anyway, if you enjoy this, do make sure you hit that follow button and chime in in chat. It's more fun when more people are around uh, and, you know, it, streams are generally more fun when everyone's participating, having a conversation, having really interesting, nuanced, and sometimes difficult conversations. So I highly encourage that. And if you want to help support the channel, either consider subscribing, uh, Twitch Prime subs, regular subs, gifted subs, and cheered bits all go directly to help the channel. Or you can head over to patreon.com slash ludohistory, where for as little as $2 per month, you'll be able to help keep making this show happen and keep making these big projects happen. So, let, let's hop over um, into our Google Doc to catch up on what we explored last week uh, and then start talking about this week's project. Well, my one is explain what the difference between strategy, operations, and tactics are. I mean, basically, right, you're zooming in at each stage, right? Strategy is the longest term perspective uh, Operations are specific medium-term campaigns uh, and offensives and logistics to make those all happen. And then tactics are your moment-to-moment -moment during a battle, right? Th that's, the, that's the quick and dirty version. In the context of World War I, I'm not equipped to really go into that. I'm not a military historian. There's nothing... It's one of my least favorite types of history to deal with, which makes this, you know, an interesting um, space to be working in right now. But, uh, you know, that, that is a quick and dirty enough way to understand it. So I'm expecting we're probably not seeing a whole lot of strat like high-level strategy stuff in this game, though I don't know that for sure. I have only just booted up the game. Um, but I expect we'll see a lot of operation stuff and then some amount of tactic stuff. Anyway, quick recap of last week. Uh, we explored Valiant Hearts, and uh, I wrote up a bit of my perspective on what it does, right? Primarily, I think Valiant Hearts is a, a fantastic example of a game as a museum, right? Its collectibles and its historical facts are based in artifacts and in archival materials, and that makes them incredibly powerful and extremely interesting. The appeal of the shiny. Um, that being said, right, approaching a game as a museum has some issues. So, you know, the very few players enter menus to read all those facts, and if they do, you run into the usual problem of uh, museum labels of you get about six seconds, 50 to 75 words, in order to communicate the significance of an artifact um, to someone before they're going to move on. So, that's not great. Um, Another issue is, you know, the question of matching, having the right artifacts to tell a broad story about the entire war, while having levels that are focused on a small section of the Western Front. 
The Russian artifacts in particular stand out as being, like, being a little bit kludged in there. Um, so you have to pick, a, like, the very short window in 1916 into 1917, where there are Russian soldiers in the Western Front, and then you stack all the artifacts in there, and you're like, well, that's a representation of the Eastern Front. Boom, we're done. Okay, bye. And then you go back to Western Front stuff. And the third issue is, you know, that creates some counter-narrative play, where, um, our... Uh, our Emil acted like a complete- and our Anna, in particular, acted like complete psychos. Oh no, someone's in trouble, let me wander around and locate all of the shiny objects first. It's not how people act, it's not how we expect characters to act in that situation, and so it creates a tension in there. So, within the narrative, beyond the museum level, right, the focus is on images, right, the visuals are spectacular and character drama, rather than a particularly strong, cohesive plot, right? Particularly, right, we start very adventure gamey, very um, loose with the story of Baron von Dorf, and the chronology and the aesthetics of different things work to create these moments of, you know, 1918 tank battles to go punch each other on top of the tanks, because Freddy got those guns, rather than uh, necessarily matching the actual operations and um, different weaponry existing in specific cultural moments. That being said, right, the dis what that does is creates two different discourses, right? One discourse that starts off very much propagandistic, very adventury, uh, very much like that Indiana Jones, go punch Nazis, heroism, pulp narrative. And then as we get into the back half of the game, it turns um, straight into the heart-wrenching and is fantastic, right? Um, complicates everything in terms of increasingly anti-officer, increasingly sympathetic to the idea that people are just trying to get through this and uh, the humanity of the people who are dying and does incredible work to make that happen. And then I added an extra note about the narrator. The narrator is super interesting here, because um, they have to lightly moralize the conflict in order for the like newscasty, news film, propaganda film, uh, narration style to work. Um, and a final note here is, of course, right the paradox of a war that is pointless, a war that specializes in destroying and consuming lives, a war that is sentient and malicious, but also the people who fought in it don't die in vain. Right, that is a paradox, I think, at the core of how we remember World War I, and I will be extremely, extremely curious um, how that's going to be navigated in some of these other games, because I think that is the core. I think that is the core of what makes World War I difficult to talk about, is that it is a paradox of memory. The people who fight in it must be remembered on this, right, the day after Memorial Day in the US. We honor those who give their lives in military service to the country, especially in the world wars. And yet, the war itself is this bestial, animalistic, consuming force that demolishes those lives for little material gain, despite oftentimes the competence of the people trying to end it. And it's, it's such a tough paradox to unravel, in nuanced ways, and that's something I think we're going to be revisiting kind of at the end of each game to explore, right? What extent do we deal with this sacred memory um, of the soldier, of the soldier as patriot, the soldier fighting for liberty, with the realities of how we understand the war as a consequence of a messy system of alliances that did not have to happen and that obliterates an entire generation for little geopolitical gain and even less cultural gain.
So, that's rough. But overall, right, um, I'm so happy we started with Valiant Hearts, even though, you know, it hurts my heart. Um, because it is massively successful at making us care about the people on the ground, in the trenches, and I think that is the emotional center around which all the other games we're playing are is going to be operating. So I think that's right. That is the most important World War One game for a reason. Uh, be I think starting there and building out in different directions is going to be a really productive framework. So with that, let's take a look at the Great War Western Front. Right, as I said, this is an RTS game. Um, actually, let's check in on chat first. Uh, Remember the time you went to a Titanic exhibit, where everyone was given a ticket of someone who was on board, letting you piece together what they may have experienced before telling you if your passengers survived or not? Yes, I have also been to that exhibit. Um, I want to say I was in DC when I went. I was a kid. I was like 10 years old. Uh, I did not survive, for the record. Um, but yeah, right, that's a very common thing. Um, the... I think the Holocaust Memorial Museum in DC also does something similar of giving you a real person, right, through whose individual perspective you're going to go through the exhibit and talk, right, interpret the exhibit through, and then, um, you know, did they, did they get gassed in Auschwitz-Birkenau? Most likely, yes. Um, so that's, that's just something, uh, quite a few different museums, especially museums related to mass casualty events, deal with. Um, I only just arrived and only heard I did not survive. Thus is my understanding that you are no longer alive. Correct. Uh, I am the ghost. I am the ghost of myself. Um, but we were actually talking about the Titanic Museum. Uh, and how, you know, it, it structures the museum through giving everyone a person that they are going to relate to. Uh, and, right, that's something fundamentally similar to how Valiant Hearts understands its role as an interactive museum of World War One. But yeah. Also, JCDC, I'd like to thank you. Went to a history museum with a family and realized you've learned a lot of history critical thinking skills. That is awesome to hear, and I'm glad that, like, being around here, uh, talking about my perspective, you feel like has had that impact. That's, that's genuinely super heartwarming. Thank you. Yeah, so, right, that, that's super common in museums these days. Um, the museum, there's a Viking Age museum in Aarhus that does something similar, but f with somewhat semi-fictional, like five semi-fictional characters, and you get a little thing that you can tap at various points, and it will give you their perspective on it. It's so much... You would not be here the whole time, and you hope you'll sleep this night and not sit in the corridor listening to explosions. I hope that for you too, Parishanen. I just sincerely hope- I know, right, I know Kiev has been under pretty heavy bombardment, and I really hope that it lets up um, so you're able to get rest and take care of yourself. But while you're here, we're happy to help you, or happy to have you, and hope that this provides some distraction and relief from that. So yeah, where I want to start with talking about the Great War, uh, Western Front, is actually by looking at the achievements. Um, because achievements are complicated when we're talking about games, right? Um, I've not seen any scholar, like, really correctly find the way to deal with achievements. Because they're not straightforwardly, what does the developer intend for you to do? Right? That's not how that works. But what it does do is that achievements suggest what systems the devs think are important, and that can provide insight into the possible interactive historical space of the game. So it kind of primes us as to what things might be present. There's not a whole lot of interest in them here, right? Win any medal in a historical battle. Okay. So, uh, play game good. Win a medal in all historical battles because it makes you a student of history, though. That's going to be our goal over the next three streams, is to try and get this achievement. Or, win a campaign as the Allies. Win a full campaign as the Central Powers. 
Here's an interesting one. Nothing can stop us. Win the campaign by taking Paris or Kreuznach before November 1982. What a strange... Immediately, I'm like, wait, what a deeply strange objective. What a deeply limited objective. Well, of course, this is going to reward... This is going to reward all history to some extent, uh, because that is what that is a core idea of how strategy games work, right? Strategy games cannot, will not, ever um, run a set course with a predetermined end, because then it's not a strategy game. So what is instead done, right, is creating a space w based on the same decision making and the same pressures that historically existed and then seeing how the players might navigate that that of course runs the risk uh, chris kemsall has talked about this in his book uh, as has adam chapman in his earlier article um on um art strategy games run the risk of letting players fix mistakes which are only clear as mistakes in hindsight and are based on, you know, simplifying and limiting the complexity of the circumstances that led people to make certain decisions. Right? You can fix the Nivelle offensives by doing something different. You know that's a bad idea, right? You can see that that is a bad idea with the information in the game plus historical hindsight. And so you can fix Nivelle's mistakes and see how that changes the war. You can fix the um, failure of the Schlieffenplan, right? You can fix the breakup of the two armies because you're not... You're, you're not... Uh, what's his name? Von... Um... Hell. Hang on. Quick, um, I've got the Oxford Illustrated History of the First World War here to help because yeah that's Falkenhain that's not right god dang it chat help me out here um it's, it starts with an M what's his name Moltke, thank you. Von Moltke the Younger, thank you, uh, Gazition and Enclave Microstate. Is it clear that I'm rusty? I read this book last week and I've already spaced all the names. Um, von right, we are not Von Moltke the Younger. We do not have the mm, issues that uh, Von Moltke the Younger's general staff had. We don't have to deal with the big egos of um, the German commanders. And so we can fix the Schlieffen plan by not having the army split up and therefore take Paris. Or maybe not, because, yeah. Not to be confused with his considerably more capable uncle. This is true, but given that his considerably more capable uncle had been dead for, what, 20 years at this point? Um, helpful. Anyway, so yeah, this is going to be interesting. Um, I think this is also interesting because this takes a very, mm, I don't know, paint the map approach to what is successful, what is winning. This is admittedly, you know, taking Paris is what the German army um, wanted to happen, right? That was their 1914 um, operational goal, right? The Schlieffen plan is designed to take Paris. And German soldiers brag about, I'll write to you in the fall from Paris. Obviously not, um, but uh, I don't think this would have actually ended the war. I don't. I don't think, right? If Paris, if somehow a German offensive 
had taken Paris, I don't think that would have actually ended the war. The, the government had already retreated to Bordeaux. Britain wasn't about to stop uh, once they were that committed. It would have been terrible for morale, but I don't think it would have actually done it. Oh hey, that's not what happened. In the campaign, just survive until December 1919. 1% 1 of players have ever done that. Yeah, um, because 1917 made that literally impossible. Oh well. And then here's the one that's distressing to me. This is the achievement that is most distressing. The Chemist's War. Cause 1,000 infantry casualties with gas weapons in any game mode. Let's incentivize the player to use chlorine. <laughs> Yay. Um, now, there's a few ways to interpret this. Interpretation one is that players will be mortally disinclined to do the thing that historically happened. And so the devs felt the need to introduce some sort of extra incentive to give players a reason to use chemical weapons because they found that players just weren't doing it. That I think is actually fairly likely, right? That this is a way to try and drag player behavior closer to historical practice, which includes war crimes. The other option is of course that they view um, chemical weapons as one grand successful strategy, right? And so this is incentivizing using a specific strategy uh, that the devs think is like a powerful technological tool that we want to reward players for identifying and using them. Is there a different achievement for never using gas? No. No, there is not. So, you know, that's, that's the one that I think has a lot of juice to it, uh, it's the one that, right, this is where achievements don't necessarily reveal developer intentions, because are the developers pro doing war crimes? No, of course not. That would be a ludicrous claim that requires absolutely extraordinary evidence. That being said, their achievement provides one layer of incentive to get players to enact actions that are horrifically destructive on human lives and will come to be regarded as war crimes. Never under underestimate RTS players from using an effective tactic no matter how immoral you say this as an RTS player. Totally true, right? Um, you see this in Paradox games a lot too, of that morality, role-playing, no. What strategies are widely overpowered? Let's use them. Right? Another option here that we could see, actually, is that it's actually really hard to hurt infantry, right? That the game's AI reacts really quickly to gas to neutralize its effectiveness. Um, so that this is actually something genuinely difficult to do. Uh, so this will be something we need to pay attention to. We'll need to actually, like, dig into the uh, mechanics for chemical warfare in the game and see, actually try and push on this a bit. And then there's one I actually like, right? Um, use, use airplanes to destroy a hundred machine gun and mortar encampments. Well, obviously, you know, uh, observational balloons and, uh, reconnaissance aircraft are probably more important for identifying places for artillery to take out uh, enemy artillery or machine gun nests. Bombers were used for that. Uh, and so I think that that's actually one I quite like. There is, for the record, an entire chapter. Let's see. War... There was a war in the air, isn't there? Hmm. I thought I saw one in here that was the... Or in the air. Whatever. This is this is a super good book. Uh, I highly recommend this one. So yeah, 
that's it for achievements here, right? But there's not a whole lot unsurprising here, right? Oh, we do sapping. Oh, we've got the extremely hard thing of breaking history. We've got the quote-unquote winning the war according to arbitrary urban captures. We've got the campaigns, we've got the historical battles, and we've got just play the game, play the game a lot. And the effectively the platinum, right? Get an S rank in all battles. So. Don't think there's a lot here, uh, I think that's all we can really glean from just the achievements. So I think it's time for us to actually get back into the game, huh? You find it interesting that more players have won as the, um, central powers than as the allies? It looks like it's fairly balanced, right? Reasonably up close, but yeah, it is, it is interesting. I think it's the pickle halba propaganda, if I'm being honest. Also, let's just acknowledge that the Petroglyph games are incredibly seasoned uh, RTS developers, right? They've done... they rebooted Command & Conquer, and so I'll be curious to see the extent to which, you know, Command & Conquer and standard RTS mechanics end up making their way into this game and sort of exist in tension with or are adapted into such a difficult historical setting. Their former Westwood staff... Right, like they are seasoned RTS developers. Like you, one of the one of the most seasoned uh, devs for RTSs in the industry. So like, I think there's a lot. They've made a lot of thoroughly all right RTSs as well. Yeah. Exactly. Right, they've got. A, but it's a hard. It's a hard genre, right? RTS games are difficult, and I don't blame them for not all being bangers. But anyway, I have- the game is not currently booted up, so, um, for a reason, it has an intro cutscene. So, why don't we boot that up? Um... It- it makes some claims. Let's just leave it at that. It makes some claims that I, uh, have some feelings about, so, give me just a second here. And with a bit of luck, it'll be on its way. All right, let's... Oh, everything's breaking. Hold on. And... Here we go. Never in history had a single shot so changed the fate of a continent. Archduke Franz Ferdinand, heir to the Austro-Hungarian throne, and his wife Sophie, Duchess of Hohenberg, are assassinated on a visit to Sarajevo, sparking a conflict that would engulf the world. One by one, the dominoes fall. The great empires desperate for influence are eager to tip the balance of power in their favor. Demanding retribution, Austria-Hungary declares war on Serbia, provoking Russia and Germany to stand on opposing sides. As war reaches France and Belgium, Britain honors its treaties and musters its forces. Reluctantly. Europe is now at war. Countless thousands of professional and reservist soldiers Millions. would march toward their fate onto the Franco-Belgian border. It would be a conflict like none had seen before. Technology would change the landscape of war and the scale of violence in such a way as to usher in a new world. Within four months, gone were the cavalry charges and battle lines of old. Now dominated by the thunder shock of artillery and the blistering hail of machine gun fire. This new reality would force entire armies to dig deep into the dirt and fortify their position with a line of trenches. The measure of victory now to be drawn in inches. Thus the Western Front was established. From the fields of Flanders to the borders of Switzerland, 
the great nations would make their stand. The fate of millions was now in the hands of a few. But this is a very common... This is a very common narrative about World War I. Right, the idea that... Let's turn that down just a smidge. There we go. Um, the idea that the um, that warfare prior to World War One was cavalry charges, right? Napoleonic tactics, battle lines, and this is the dr as uh, Maraxa just says that dreadful watershed with uh, of industrialized total warfare. Crimea says hello, doesn't it? Um, yeah, this is, this is simplistic, uh, this is, this is basically, I mean, let's, gosh, let me actually, having booted it up, why don't I locate the right spot in the Oxford Illustrated History, um, that talks about, right, the end of the introduction, talks about this kind of exact phenomenon, uh, so, Hang on, we're gonna get rid of this, though the music will continue, luckily. And... B. Right, the introduction actually, um, specifically engages with three different claims, which I think is super useful, uh, to help frame this. Let me... Oh, we got some lag happening. Oh, hell. screen. Damn it. Okay, so the lag appears to only be when we are in window, or out of window. That's good. So we'll have to just be careful with that. Yay, I love technology. Why is this eating so many resources? Um, anyway, right, the global total modern war, right? Uh, thinks about those three things. And at the end of the introduction, it notes that despite lots and lots of words being mentioned on the centenary, right, uh, quote, deeper scholarly understanding has not uh, penetrated into public consciousness. The third big spike in the effort to shape understanding of the war is and will be that generated by the centenary. The challenge for the media, for broadcasters and publishers, and even for national governments will be to escape the cliches of the 50th anniversary in order to shape a fresh set of popular narratives. It's clear that many of these will be personal and local, and do with family history and community engagement. And they also need to be global. The history of the war needs to break the bounds of national and parochial debate to become genuinely comparative and international, so more fully reflecting both the war's nature, with its independent variables, and its impact. This book aspires to match such an agenda. Right, so... This is, right, the narrative this game set strikes me as much more the 50th anniversary uh, of the war's narrative than that of the 100th anniversary. Uh, it is the Oxford Illustrated History of the First World War. It was released in 2014, um, right on time for the centenary. And I think that is, you know, uh, yep. I think that is... Uh, a really useful book, uh, as, like, your- if you know the broad strokes already of, you know, the- what, what does a trench look like? What does- what are the main geopolitical actors at this point, right? If you already have some sense of that from, I don't know, a decent museum exhibit, uh, trade books, popular histories of the war, whatever, I think that's- it's that good semi-introductory level, 
uh, right, I guess the scholarly introductory level of the First World War, exploring it from a lot of different angles, including gender and the home front, which we love to see. But yeah. I'm sure, you know, uh, on play Microsoft, I'm sure our mutual um, friend, Illuminati Rex, would have strong feelings about the idea of gone are the cavalry charges in 1914. Uh, sadly, uh, turns out that narrative is just wrong. Cavalry remains crucial throughout the war, uh, especially in the Eastern Front, um, but even in the Western Front, it remains absolutely crucial. Um, and uh, as have, I've seen many a rant uh, from him on that subject. He happens to be the uh, director these days, I think, of a historical society in Connecticut. Uh, sadly, he's not been available. He's he's not been he's not been available to come on, but provided very helpfully provided some resources on the commemoration of the First World War that I was able to look at. So shoutouts to him. Polish legions would like a very big war, one with lots of gratuitous laws. Hopefully, yeah. The Belgian army has cavalry. The Polish legion has cavalry. I'm thinking the Czechoslovak legion legion has cavalry. Um, the Ottomans are intensely reliant on cavalry, uh, and cavalry-adjacent things. It's... Like, cavalry remains incredibly important in both Eastern, East and Western fronts, um, throughout World War One, And so the idea that that is, like, the Crimean light, light cavalry charge is the standard model of warfare up until World War One. No, 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 they knew what they were doing. Machine guns weren't new technology. Trenches weren't new technology. Like, the, so, this is very much the, um... Uh, already seeing some sense of a disconnect uh, between what actual, you know, archival analysis suggests is true and how we remember the war as a watershed moment. But anyway, let's hop into, um, you know, the tutorial for the game, because I would love, I would love to know how to play this game, thank you. To quote a certain Rolke Dyke, dig a ditch, then dig another, and then another. Trenches do be like that. U.S. Cavalry pushed to not give up horses for a long time after the war. Exactly. Weren't machine guns used in the American Civil War? Yeah. Not, they're not super common, but yeah. So, uh, let's play uh, the tutorial. Shoutouts to Uncle Sam over here. And then we can either have, you know, the French propaganda or the uh, German propaganda. What do you know? Tutorial. Campaign start. May 1918. After remaining neutral for several years, America is prodded into action by sunken ships and a disturbing telegram. What do you know? Um, if they mention the Lusitania, I'm gonna be mad. But that's okay. America remained neutral through most of World War I, supplying aid but not taking part in combat. However, Germany's increased attacks on American ships began to sway many in the government. When the British revealed the Zimmerman telegram to the Americans, in which Germany offered to return American territory to Mexico if they become allies and attack the U.S., it was the last straw. Good. That is a much better, a much better summary than just going Lusitania, skip a few years, America's in the war. I lied about my age and joined up when I was 17. Looking back... I was just a foolish boy looking for glory on the battlefield. The enemy had sunk our ships and trying to turn Mexico against us, and they had to pay. My platoon arrived in France in April of 1918. General Pershing organized our troops. My unit was assigned to a French contingent for training. And none of us had any experience with the new way of fighting, and the trench lines were a bit of a shock. Oh. Bonjour, I'm Lieutenant Colonel André Laurent. Welcome to France. I understand you are eager to fight, but this is the Western Front. The trenches are no place for the inexperienced. Advisor overview. The top advisor box contains general information or story content, while the lower box will contain specific how-to information. 
I don't know at the time, but Laura had been in the Battle of the Sun. You can see a kind of distance in his eyes, though he didn't let it show in his voice. Reviewing the past, you can click the left and right arrows to review any previous dialogue boxes. Be advised, the tutorial will sometimes lock the camera. When it does, you'll see a camera symbol in the lower right corner of the screen. You can do that, and then you can do that, and then you can do that. This is the theater map which depicts the Western Front, including regions in France, Belgium, Luxembourg, and Germany. Each region shows the current controlling faction. That's Central Powers. That's Allies. Well, France. France, 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 France. Yep. The map is divided into hexagonal areas called regions. All regions of the map are under the control of either the Allied Nations or the Central Powers. Allied Nation region boxes are highlighted in blue. Central Powers are highlighted in red. I will be blunt. The Russian treaty with Germany has freed up nearly 50 divisions of German infantry to be transferred to the Western Front. Your men are needed to shore up the line and push back against this new threat. The front line is where combat happens. Regions can only initiate attacks on adjacent hexes. As you capture or lose regions, the front line will adjust position. That's General MacArthur. National will. Oh. National will is a manager of an alliance's willingness to continue the war. If an alliance's national will is reduced to zero, that alliance loses the war and the game. Oh, interesting. Our civilians see this as a German spring offensive as something to worry about. A worrying civilian is one who does not support the war and begins doubting that we can win, even talking about surrender. That's a way to understand the home front. While this army can't worry about the feelings of civilians, the threat of new German manpower is not something to dismiss. If we are not vigilant, Germany could reach Paris. The second way to win the game is to capture the region containing the faction's headquarters. For allies, the command HQ is Paris. For the central powers, the command HQ is Kreuznach. Paris is still a long way from the front lines. I will never let Germany get but Move the map using WASD. Paris. Germany can try to reach Paris, but we will never let them through. We will make sure that your American forces are trained to aid us in this defense. Friesen has a defense rating measured in stars. Once you attack a region, achieving a great victory removes one star. Once the final star is removed, the region becomes yours. One star regenerates per turn for the owning faction as- Oh. Oh. Uh oh, that's how that works. So even decisively winning, you have to decisively win one, two, three, four turns in a row for the end game, six turns in a row, in order to capture the enemy capital. Oh, that's rough. Oh. Oh, that's rough. Paris is also our central hub for new recruits and the ma manufacturing munitions, including tanks and aircraft. Some regions have inherent bonuses or features. Paris, for example, has both the Command HQ bonus, which designates it as a win condition, and the Deployment bonus, which means all new French troops begin in this region. You can see any bonuses in the Region Selection panel. Down there. This does paint the war ending as a bad thing, right? Uh, this paints the war ending... as an excruciatingly difficult thing. Yeah, trying to create the feeling of it being a real struggle to exploit even a seemingly massive victory at the front. Yeah. Our forces begin in Paris to be deployed to the front line. Once we get you organized, your men will be deployed in the same fashion. Military units can be moved on the map. Units can have different names, but act the same way. An infantry corps and a tank battalion are both units. Infantry corps, tank battalion, air wing. Combat supply, combat supply, combat... oh boy. These types of companies found in a unit are not always the same. For example, an infantry corps can contain multiple infantry types and artillery. Oh, are these the... 
So this is the units in the region. Gotcha. So yeah, the there are no nope, let let me nest the tooltips. I see a flamethrower unit, I see two artilleries, I see a sapper, and I see twenty riflemen. I see tanks. And I see two bombers. The influence of Axis and Allies on this um, feels very present. You know, there is a World War One version of Axis and Allies that was released in, what, 2013, I think? So, I haven't actually played that version. Anyway, reinforce Chateau Thierry. Uh, Intel is expecting a German assault. French command requests that the newly arrived Americans be moved up to reinforce the French forces at the Chateau. Hans gets the Flammenwerfer. Move three American infantry corps to there. Um, plus three national. Move two French tank battalions there. Uh, it seems this will be a trial by fire. I'd hope to have more time for drills, but orders are orders. Objective events are optional requests that grant a reward if you complete the t within the time limit in turns. Objective events are just one type of event that can occur during a campaign. In the campaign, there is no penalty other than not receiving the reward. In general, it will be worth the effort, but it's ultimately up to you. Alright, so there's Chateau Thierry. These are, are these the Americans? Uh, our forces here have been fighting bravely, but they have had little t rest or peace for a long time. I'm sure your reinforcements are a welcome sight. You must achieve a victory of great victory level in combat to remove a star from a region. When a region is lost, any defenders will retreat to the nearest uh, friendly region. Some units, such as siege artillery, cannot be moved in a retreat. What? Okay. We have Desne Le Marois as a starting staging ground for American forces. Any new American units will begin there. Our logistics people keep the unit types together for each reference, but a thoughtful distribution of forces is necessary for each victory. The stuff that's at the back can't be moved on the tree? Exactly. That is exactly the same thought I had. Uh, siege artillery is the f first stuff you can pull out. Because you can have long-range bombardment from elsewhere on the front to cover that sort of retreat. Cans are heavy. Okay, but I have like... Depending on where you're on the front, either have like competent rail line or have, you know, if you're aware that something's going badly, route draft animals to the front. Right, if it's a route, then absolutely, yeah. Um, if they get blown to smithereens by enemy bombardments uh, before the initial push, absolutely, yeah. But if there's an organized, like, retreat, you want to get your siege artillery out of there. Yeah, like... They have a bombardment range of miles. Anyway. Uh, units are displayed on the map as four stacks of four types. Infantry, tanks, aircraft, and siege artillery. All present units are shown in the region pane. Left-clicking on a unit will add it to the units to move box, or back. While... Right-clicking adds the entire stack. Okay, so we do this. So we select four of them, right? Well, actually, we'll move all six, I think. So let me move all of them. Oh, select three. You can only do three infantry core. Okay. And then we right-click on here to move them, and they just go, as they zoom. The infantry has filled in the defensive gaps as planned, we should take stock and see what else is needed there. To the same type stack on the map, even if they are different nationalities. So if we go here... Despite the language barriers, our soldiers seem to get along. Your soldiers will be tired from the transfer, so they will be on defensive duty only for now. Units can either move or attack once per turn. This can defend whether they moved or attacked, but if you initiate an attack, only those units that haven't moved can participate. 
you cannot attack from a single region more than once per turn. We'll see, we'll see um, what options for um, movement and improvement exist as we get on. But you're right, right now this does feel like 1916-1917. Uh, and we'll see uh, rather than 1918's more mobile push. Anyway, I had a little friend from high school, but learning a language in the classroom was a whole lot different than being surrounded by it. The common soldiers seemed to get on great, but the officers seemed frustrated. They would exchange information and coordinate attacks, but it wouldn't take orders from each other. Now, whose fault is that, MacArthur? Now... Whose fault is that that the Americans were not subsumed into um, French command structures and just refused to take orders? It's the Americans' fault. It's the Americans' fault. It's 100% the Americans' fault. The French specifically wanted that. Uh, Pershing, even extra, right? Yes, Wilson, but also Pershing. Mixing units from different nationalities in the same region can reduce morale. There are three groups. Britain, Canada, Australia, and India form Group 1. France is Group 2, and America is Group... Th if units from more than one group are in... <laughs> Fucking India being unproblematically included in group one are we are we for because clearly there's one language spoken unproblematically between britain canada australia and india no well colonialism that we should pay attention to or racial rivalries And clearly, France had no colonies to speak of. Ignore the um, Moroccan, Egyptian, East African, West African. It Troops that served. Like. There's a whole thing of, like, Tunisian French forces having to be in their own divisions and move to southern France in the winter because French officers were super worried about it hurting their morale too much to fight. Don't forget New Caledonia? True. Don't forget New, New Caledonia. Yeah. Indian troops were withdrawn from the Western Front after 1915. Admittedly to go fight in Persia, but, uh, you know, that's... present. But... Yeah. Also, this, this one is weird, right? I know what they're trying to do. Right? I, I know what they're trying to do here. Um, because... There is a genuine problem of the Triple Entente like, really struggling to coordinate actions because they didn't really have the same strategic objectives. They all shared the strategic objective of win the war, but past that they had massively different geopolitical interests that had to be dealt with, and that had echoes down through the front lines. Um, and... I mean, yes. Th thank you, Uncle Ibarcus, I appreciate it, yeah. Uh, John Horn calls it a hierarchy of fronts corresponding to a hierarchy of races. Absolutely true. Uh, but, but, yeah, I mean, they, they were transferred to Persia for colonialism reasons. Um, 
but it does emphasize, you know, that just because they're not here on the French border does not mean that they were not in the war uh, and were not, you know, import important and should be remembered as part of the war effort. Yeah. Uh, also, yeah, this, right, the, the central powers suffered no penalty, of course, because they all speak the same German. The Ottoman Empire definitely speaks the same German, um, right? But what, the, what they're representing here is a concern that's very present in 1916 and 1917 among Entente intelligence of an interior, interior rail line, right? The idea that there is a much more fluidity um, of central powers forces because there's continuous rail lines uh, crossing from the uh, across Germany and Austria-Hungary uh, that enable more rapid movement of troops. That's almost certainly what they're trying to do here. I just don't know if it's that successful um, here by just turning that into a language thing rather than and a shared operational or a shared strategic goal thing versus the Entente's disunity. Yeah, Hungarians famously being Germanophone. The, uh, Czech, Czechoslovakia being um, famously... I mean, like, you know, the, the Czech Legion, uh, which, you know, was triple... The Czechoslovak region being, you know, serving with Russia because they all defected from Austria-Hungary immediately. But still, you know, famously Austria-Hungary, a place of one language and one culture with no ethnic... Um, Disputation or tension? Also, famously a place with no colonial troops who spoke different languages be- oh wait. The- the Afro-German infantry would like- would like a word. <laughs> yeah, what a- what a funky choice. Anyway. Belgium, Belgium can stack groups 1 and 2, Central Powers just don't have that problem. Alright. If you're ever unsure of your orders, we have a logbook. The event will show a list of all active events and their duration. Clicking on individual events will display the event pop-up. Clicking on the exclamation icon will toggle the list between active and completed events. Instant events, such as headlines, will not be listed in the log. Until inspecting a German assault, French command requests that newly arrived American forces do that. Move two French tank battalions. All right. So when you go here, whereas it will take time for your heavy armaments to get across the Atlantic, they're extremely mad about that. What do you mean we realize? They're mad about it. For now, I have taken the liberty of requisitioning some of our tanks for your use. I have heard that your men have taken a liking to them. So we select here. And we uh, selected the tanks, fantastic, and then we move them up here. Oh yeah. The Czechoslovak region went all through Russia and back, and it was a lot. Oh yeah, no, um, I've seen, like, the movements of the Czechoslovak region is w wild. Anyway, we got 750 gold. I don't know why we got gold for that besides it's a video game, but that's fine. That's fine, our morale is great. Command has granted us gold reserves for completing your orders. This is a vital resource used by officers to requisition all manner of necessary items needed for the global theater. Gold reserves are used for all purchases on the theater command level. It allows you to purchase new units such as tanks and aircraft, region structures, and use strategic abilities. One of the most important uses is to purchase supply for battles. You're granted gold at the start of each turn. And there it was, our first assault orders. We'll be going over the top to assault the enemy line. We all felt excitement, fear, nervous energy, and confusion swirling in our guts. At one month, we'll face the fact that some of us weren't going home. Operation de Chatillon Soumar, assault, uh... French command believes the victory as Chateau Saint-Marc will pull German forces to that location and release all the pressure on Chateau Thierry. A good outcome here could also give the people back home positive news. So reinforce French troops at Montmorey and capture Chateau Saint-Marc. 
We have two turns to do that. So there's Mamure, and there's Chalon Suma. The battle takes place without proper recon work. While we perform aerial reconnaissance over enemy territory, uh, information can grow stale. Selecting a region displays a lot of information. For enemy regions, however, much of that information is hidden to you. You will not be able to see their exact army composition or economic details. Alright. One of our best kinds of intel some of our best intel comes from spies in the area. Our operatives can scout out the information we need and relay it to command. Right now we need more information about their military strength. Select the army intel button. That gives us I met one of those spies once, nerves of steel. You'd have to be tough to hide behind enemy lines, risking your life with every step you take. Your first espionage mission uses each turn will always succeed, but each subsequent one has an increasing risk factor. Chance to fail. If you get a mission failure, your gold is still spent, you, know, you get no uh, additional information, and your ability to perform espionage is locked for the rest of the turn. Spies are reporting new intel is available. Uh huh. So we select here, and we're going to get more info. German Conspect Infantry Corps, rifles, and uh, some artillery. So we've got some conscripts, we've got some re regular infantry, and then we have one tank. Our spies are reporting a large buildup of German troops, more than we knew about. Uh huh. Uh huh. Hello, Magistrissa. We are playing the tutorial. Because of course we are. Uh, show the number of turns the enemy remains active for that region. So we have three turns left um, on the espionage to be successful. And then we can research theft or sabotage later. Interesting. And directly on the enemy region and only apply to that region. Okay. Need to bolster with the American, uh, remaining American Corps in Nemero if you want to succeed. So we select, select them. And we move them over here. And we requisition new tanks, which is the purchase menu, which is down here. French tank battalion. Those machines were amazing. Our boys were already coming with new ways to use them that will hopefully surprise the Germans. I think they also wanted to take them apart and see what made them tick. Then we close that. And then we just have new tanks immediately? We just have them immediately. What's the vibes on this game? Well, Ends of History is a teaching. Um, right now, right, the media vibe feels very much, uh, the opening cutscene was very 50th centenary, or 50th anniversary, rather than centenary understandings of it, but we'll see. Uh-huh. It would be beneficial to have air support for this uh, battle, while well, recon is essential, keeping enemy bombers and balloon busters away from our lines will allow us to concentrate on the trenches. We'll need to transfer them to the battlefield. So we've got these. And then we'll move them over here. And then we do that. The home front sure doesn't exist in this game, does it? I believe we have sufficiently equipped our frontline trenches. Now we turn to outlying support for Mamire. Uh, so we do this, we select them. Are you moved to the with the rest to Mamire? As we near the trench line, we could see the siege artillery setting up well away from where we would be fighting. Those guns were designed to be to pound trenches. I would hate to be under one of those shells when they landed. Siege artillery are unique units that do not appear on the battlefield. Instead, they allow you to use siege bombardment in battles. They do not affect this unit of command. Any siege artillery still in a region when it is captured will be lost. Okay, so we need to. So we need to retreat them manually, make the call that we're not going to be able to hold a spot, and then move them. I guess that makes a little more sense. The fact that they're not appearing on the battlefield, though, is actually quite frustrating. So then we should set up counterintelligence. Um, so we go here, we go co-intel. What does this actually cost us? 
It's 360 somethings, but um, gold. It costs us gold. The spies work quickly. By the end of the week, no less than three German agents were captured and interrogated. Okay. We have been, we have been using gold reserves uh, to bolster our troops and have firepower to the lines. On the battlefield, however, supply is needed, not gold. A soldier without ammo or bandages is a soldier who cannot fight. An artillery cannon with no shells is nothing but a rock to hide behind. Alright. Supply is the currency used during battles. Supply is used to build trenches and other defenses, call in reinforcements, and to activate abilities such as artillery fire and air missions. It made sense. Our packs contain our essentials. Ammo, first aid, and hygiene. There's no way we could carry enough ammo for an extended battle. Supply trucks could bring in what we needed, but if we had a more permanent storage solution, we could fight without worry. Huh. Gina you know, on the strategic map sets, grants a set amount of supply to the region. This is refreshed to each battle. Supply depots allow us to store what we need for combat in a safe location and keep it in reserve for the region. Fair enough. Global de supply depots allow you to pull from the global supply bank to supplement the supply from your units. They are one of the most important structures you can build and are essential if you want to bring the full might of your army to bear against the enemy. Fair enough. Uh, brings that up to 600. Don't know why, but seeing that depot secure behind the ridge gave me a feeling of security. We knew at least that we weren't going to lose this battle because we ran out of bullets. There was one less thing to worry about. There are six different structures available in the campaign, each with its own bonuses. All of them have multiple levels that increase in power as you upgrade them. Defensive battles. Okay. I believe we are as prepared as we can be. Once our troops are rested and in position, we'll begin the battle. They can defend if the enemy attacks for now, uh, but for now, await further orders. You are dismissed. You can take as many actions as you like during your turn. Once you have done everything you can, click the end turn button. The turn indicator will switch to the enemy, and they'll be able to perform any of the same actions that you can. Huh. That's how they're representing the Alliance, Britain, the Union Jack inside the French Tricolor? Okay. And it's just Germany. The Germans do not sleep or stand idle as the month passes. They go about their business in war just as... We do. The enemy eh, has the same available actions as you do. It'll move troops, purchase supply, plan attacks, and research new tech. Your ability to see what the AI player is doing will depend on how you have used espionage missions. For the most part, you'll be able to see that the AI is doing something, but not what. Our spies got enemy spies attempting to gain army intel. So remember to use co counter intel on your staging grounds and important targets to deprive the AI of the extra knowledge. One thing I've learned is any increase in spy activity usually means the enemy is probing for a good reasons. Our officers knew this too, and we're prepping for an attack. Do we have a passage? It appears to be approximately like one turn is one month, is what they're implying, but I've not really uh, made that clear yet. Alright, we are under attack. The AI can attack your territories on its turn, which will put you on the defenses. Each front line, the line between the hexes, will use a different map. We're attacking with 80... Weird. Um, we have four tanks, we have 60, we have them, we have them, we have them, we have them, we have them. Okay, auto resolve, likely outcome, stalemate. Uh, with, while you're able to see each size total morale and what you're bringing into battle, you will only be able to see exactly what the enemy is bringing in if you have an active army intel espionage mission active in the enemy region. Which we do, so we're able to see everything. So some things might be simplified compared to other missions? Probably. So we don't know. Our recon teams were efficient between the ground scouts and aerial recon, we had at least some idea of what the Germans would throw at us. Without dedicated spies, however, we could only get numbers, not details. They could have conscripts, or they could be stormtroopers. We would only know when the flames began to flow. 
The point of pain will show you a great deal of information about the upcoming battle, including the region, who is attacking, and special modifiers. One of the most important things is the available supply, which is broken down into core supply and your supply draw. Remember that without a supply depot in the region, your supply draw will be zero. If you find battles to be too difficult, try adding or upgrading the region's supply depot. So we have a core supply there, and we have a max supply draw of 600, so we at least have something. The team had an entire strategy and logistics team to tell us the likely outcome of the battle before it happened based on the current intel. The one thing that the team could never quantify though was the human spirit. A good leader could defy the odds and win the day. The auto-resolve likely outcome shows you the range of win levels your battle will fall into if you auto-resolve the battle, the yellow box. Auto-resolve simulates a battle based on force numbers and random elements. The more even a battle it is, the better it is to fight the battle directly, so your skill and good decisions play more of a part in the battle than chance. This is it, we'll meet them on the battlefield, they will not take this ground. Attacker must play a supply cost to initiate while defense is free. Attacker always has the option to cancel an attack before it begins. Defender can concede a battle, taking the loss without casualties. So how does this work? Here's the actual battle part of this. Uh, when your spies failed, they, they t seem to tell you that they failed, uh, rather than us just getting bad intel. Force available. We have 60 Americans, 60 Frenchmen, American sappers, Amer French flamethrowers, uh, French sappers, bunch of French tanks, 12 artillery and some airplanes. So we're behind on airplanes. Um, welcome to the front line. I am Adjutant Chef Garnier. Lieutenant Crenet de Roy has spoken highly of you Americans and your ability to get things done. Sure. This is 1918? All right, so there's the German supply. I guess these are our trench lines. Uh-huh. What are our trench lines? Our trench lines don't... F are these all supposed to be... We can just remove trenches. What? Okay. All, males, all battles begin in the pre-battle phase, which allows you to set up your trench lines and initial troop placement before starting the actual battle. The map is divided into three sections. Each faction has their home territory, and between them is no man's land. We're on Mars now, boys. Yeah, we are. It's covered up, but we are in May 1918. Feel free to look around and get your bearings. Battle will soon be upon us, so getting familiar with the territory will be beneficial to you. Click on the mini map in order to go wherever you need to. Boom. There's German, I guess, command there. And this is going to be friend, ally command. What a flag! What a flag! Yup. Mm hmm. There were already sun trenches in place when we arrived. You can tell some of them have been there longer than others by how well they were built. Some were dirt walls, barely held in place with planks, while others had wood walls and concrete reinforcement. On your first time fighting in a specific location, the battle will begin with a few pre-placed trenches. You are free to use them or replace them as you see fit. Any trenches you build will remain in place in all future battles in that location unless they are destroyed. There is- that's what I was looking for it. Right, why, why are we starting with a relatively unmarked landscape? But no, we're not. It's just that this is the tutorial. They want to give you a chance to place new things. Well, we actually do have turn-to-turn -turn consistency between the uh, landscape, which is a good touch. We love it. Looking around, the soldiers were digging even more trenches attached to earlier ones we saw. Artillery cannons were being wheeled in along with carts full of ammo. Everywhere preparations were being made and tons of earth were being moved. Objects such as weapon emplacements, artillery batteries, and observation balloons do not persist between battles and will need to be rebuilt each time. We have automatically added a few for this battle to save time. Our aerial recon patrols and spies have been working to bring us information on the German lines. We can't completely rely on that information, however, as delivery delays can make their observations stale. Enemy trenches also persist between battles and can be updated during the pre-battle phase. That means your knowledge of the enemy lines from battle to battle can become outdated. Using scouts or observation balloons to view the enemy lines can reduce casualties. 
A good trench layout serves two purposes, though not always at the same time. Firstly, it provides a staging ground for assaults on the enemy line. Secondly, it provides a defensive position to protect our key positions and personnel. Control points are the primary focus of the battle. Talking with the French veterans, we learn the most important lesson. Be in a trench as much as possible, whether our own or the enemy's. We could use their own trench lines against them to assault their key positions while being safe from their bullets. Mm -hmm. Only infantry can capture the control point, but they can be in or out of a trench while doing so. We are standing in the command trench, the nerve center of the operation, on this part of the front, such as a key location that must be protected at all costs. Command trench was a busy place. Messages constantly ran in and out, orders were given and received, and maps were studied and decisions made. Losing this place to the enemy would indeed be a huge blow to the battlefield. Their infantry in the command trench are immune to damage from outside. In addition, command trench is immune to siege artillery. However, infantry stationed inside cannot fire at targets outside of the trench. Fair enough. Your first assignment will be to aid in shoring up our damaged defenses. Our right flank by position A took some damage in the last battle and need your men to repair and reinforce there. Building and deploying troops require supply. Total supply you have in battle is determined by the number of units and the supply depot available in the region on the world map. 25% of your total available supply is reserved for when the battle starts, so you always have some avail supply for artillery fire and reinforcements. Engineers have categorized things for you so you know what is available for your use. We have multiple types of trenches that serve different purposes. Familiarize yourself with them. We have a basic firing trench. We have an improved firing trench. So, two companies, still two companies, grants targeting immunity from rifle fire and medium protection from artillery and trench. An advanced firing trench, a blockhouse trench, or a communications trench. Alright, Sadness. We will see you later. Cool. Uh, there are multiple levels and types of trenches you can build. Firing trenches allow them to uh, fire at oncoming reserves, uh, oncoming enemies while remaining safe. They have rated trenches based on their protection value and material costs. So we have that. Once you have chosen what type of trench, they will dig it out to you. This of course requires supply. By clicking on the trench button, you enter placement mode. You can place the trench in any valid uh, location. The trench icon will turn red for invalid locations. You can use the mouse button to rotate the trench. Gotcha! So all of these are extant trenches already, so these are all, uh, looks like mostly type 3 trenches. So we can drop an extra one in there to help support it. One trench will not suffice, remember that for soldiers to be protected, they must be able to travel through trenches as much as possible. Uh-huh. Place as many of the same object as you want. Uh, when you are done, right-click to exit placement mode, or choose another ob object to place. Okay, but like, I want to... Boom. I want to be able to move, but I'm kind of locked. So I guess we do that. I would love to set one up between these, but sadly, Hexgrid says no. Well done. Building lines of trenches allows for greater protection while our men are moving around. You can upgrade previously placed trenches by placing a higher level version on top of the existing one. Upgrades cost less supply than building the higher level trench from scratch. You cannot downgrade, but you can just remove it. While protection is a primary goal of trenches, so is movement. Communication trenches allow our men to swiftly travel between the, main, the primary firing trench lines to get to where they need it. Uh-huh. Click that. These are just small... These are small trenches, which lets us go here and here. Blockhouse trenches, or bunkers, are heavily fortified, used to house reserve troops. They're impervious to just about anything. Uh-huh. Trenches are not the only thing our engineers can provide. We can also build support structures. Gun emplacements, including machine gun nests and mortar positions. Click the machine gun nest. Check your 
a badly aimed machine gun might as well be another rock on the battlefield. It must be attached to the trench lines at various spur mount points. Interesting. Uh, machine gun nests have an arc of fire. They can't shoot anything outside of it. So we can either we can have something covering up here, like this big, big spooky forward position. Where are their lines? They're, my camera's locked, so I don't know. Place three machine gun nests. Fine. I'm going to assert... ...that uh, we actually want this to be a cross. Engineers can reinforce your weapon emplacements if you feel the need, though it digs more heavily into our supply. Both machine guns and mortars have two versions, uh, a standard and a reinforced. Fair enough. Uh, reinforced versions have much higher health and are more resistant to artillery and grenades. So, weigh the likelihood of attack versus cost when making the choice. Uh-huh. What we strung up around farms is, uh, is now used as a weapon of war. Uh, if you want the enemies to stay in the sights of machine guns for longer, what better way than to tangle them up in a nest of wire? Slows any infantry that pass through it to a crawl, allowing you more time to murder them. As enemies pass through, they damage the wire until eventually it will snap and be destroyed. It can also be destroyed by artillery fire, bombs, and crushed by tanks. Uh, we are sure doing trench warfare today. Infantry are immune to your own barbed wire, but your tanks will still... Okay, sure. I used to see barbed wire all over the place back home. It was always a neat line of fencing, though. Uh, not these dangerous-looking coils. The stuff was just everywhere, forming a maze of death just past the lines. Razor wire is the more deadly cousin. Razor wire acts exactly the same bar as barbed wire, but additionally damages enemies that pass through it. Observation balloons are a vital source of intel for the trench lines. Our observer can rise above the landscape and radio down to the ground crew about what he sees. With this information, we can better see troop movements and trench layouts. Where you set up balloons will determine how much of the battlefield you can see. As vulnerable as they are, keeping them to the rear... Uh... So how far do they actually see? Because it feels like something like that reveals... Okay, so they highlight how much it... Right, right here is vulnerable to a lot of stuff. Oh, wait, we can go way farther forward. Yeah. We can do, like, right there. Command structure on the front lines is word of mouth and messenger travel. So we can only track and coordinate a supply. Um... And so we can... Yep, command cap is limited to how many units you can place on the battlefield. In the campaign, this number is 30, though it can change in other game modes. Weapon emplacements, balloons, and aircraft do not reduce command cap. Infantry, tanks, and artillery do. We track all the companies currently deployed to better handle their orders. If you use command cap, it appears in the unit tray button in the center of the screen. Each company is represented by a portrait. Clicking a portrait will select the company, while double-clicking will select and center the... A uh, camera on the company. These are very far back. Um, but I guess what's their bombardment range? Oh, their bombardment range is the entire goddamn point. I can bombard the command point. Gotcha. Artillery battles are not mobile. They do require special men to fire them. Uh huh. Uh huh. Field artillery is primarily used to cause damage. All the various shells they can use are designed to destroy. Um, while this is best used on defense, in some cases a more offensive use is called... Sorry, what do you mean artillery is primarily used for... The, the, the standard operational like process of an offensive starts with artillery.
Okay, fine, sure, whatever. When I was large as the siege cannons I had seen, the heavy artillery lived up to his name. Uh, while I did not see any poison gas shells, I was told they existed. I would heard stories about Ypres and did not want to experience it for myself. So I put this directly behind here. That covers, like, basically the entire freaking. Wow, that covers so much ground. Now that our stationary defense is placed, it's time to fill our trench line with men ready to defend our country. Troop deployment. Uh huh. Exactly. Wasn't World War not known for both sides in any given battle shelling the hell out of each other until one side got enough of an advantage to actually send troops? Yes. Um, it's the standard tactic, certainly by 1918, as what's called, I believe it's a rolling barrage. So you concentrate fire on one strategic point. So say, you know, if we're attacking over here, oh, our camera's locked. So if they're attacking over this way, they're going to artillery the hell out of this area with the goal of busting up the barbed wire, the machine gun nests, and enemy, any enemy mortars that happen to be in the area. Then... Having forced everyone to move out of the way, or get shelled to death, you're going to run everyone in. Then you take this, uh, your artillery then moves to the next area, presumably somewhere over here, because that's where the trenches are moving, while your infantry run and tanks run forward to claim this area. And then having shelled the hell out of this area, and effectively uh, forced them to back up even farther, you're going to move forward into the next area. So, it is like the standard offensive plan. Anyway, we don't want our men milling about outside the trenches when the firing starts. Uh, the infantry companies cost less supply to deploy in battle, but they must be placed into trenches. In addition, they may be subjected to siege artillery barrages before the battle starts. Gotcha. We've got... Having talked with soldiers from multiple countries now, it seemed that all of them had a knack for something that was a cultural thing. The French were very efficient with their supplies as they were fighting uh, in their own country. Our boys took to tanks like ducks and water, the British were crack shot. Oh, no. Yeah, you want the 50 year anniversary things? Like, what a game. What. What a stereotyped imagery uh, of the American tanks are the solution. Right? Americans love tanks. Yeah, let's go. Tanks are cool. And the. And the Brits have their Lee Enfield rifles, can fire 15 rounds per minute at extreme precision, <laughs> thereby giving the Germans a ruddy good showing and bloodying their nose of it. Etc. Etc. I won't do a French accent, I'll spare you all that, that torture. For the Allies faction, infantry companies have a nationality bonus which grants a unique modifier. You can see this modifier by selecting a company and viewing the infra pain or tooltips. These bonuses are something to consider. Exactly, of the Mad Minute. Very heavily mythologized, uh, let's give Jerry the waffle, eh hey, lads? <laughs> Meanwhile, the Jeremy Army had, like, really good artillery or something. Yeah. Done in 1918, 95% um, of German artillery positions were known um, by the time the May 1918 offensive starts. So, um, the American and then French artillery was well-equipped to deal with them. Well, I never been quite sure how to feel about arbitrary nationality bonuses. Mm. There's a reason I'm making fun of it. Um, it's a very gamey thing, right? It's not that it's completely ungrounded, because there are, of course, cultural and logistical differences between companies from different places, because they're under different commanders who operate in different ways with different restrictions. But it's also a very gamey thing to distill that complex set of idea of different training, um, of different command structures, of different everything else, into a nationality bonus. It's like having half our ancestry background bonus. Exactly, right? It's it's very much coming out of like old school war games, um, which in Dungeons and Dragons evolves into race or ancestry bonuses, uh, which then ports back into war games. So, it's it's a 
it's interesting. Nationality bonuses. Take fans. Infantry give better morale bonuses and less penalties when around any tanks. Home advantage. Infantry companies cost less supply to field as reinforcements. I suspect the same could not be said for the Germans, since they were for the most part all from the same country. It's possible they had other advantages I just didn't know about since I don't speak German, and they didn't seem inclined to talk. Oh god. Alright. Um, German soldiers do not have nationality bonuses. Instead, Germany can use conscript infantry and have other variations in their units. Because apparently conscription was only a German thing, right? R r right? Right? The, um, Fre F French East African companies would love a word. As they get literally kidnapped. Lots of colonial troop companies were impressed into service um, by the Triple Entente. So, you know. Fucking literally kidnapped and forced to join the army. I mean, surely you can come up with arbitrary differences between Prussian, Saxons, and Bavarians at a minimum. Yep. Looks at Australian conscription uh, plebiscite. Yeah. Um, also, you know, conscription, right? Conscription was practiced in all countries in the war because who the fuck would volunteer? Right, by 1916, who the hell is volunteering for this? In 1914, absolutely. Even in 1915, there are people volunteering, especially British Expeditionary Forces, uh, as Britain continued to drag its feet on being, sending, uh, you know, fully organized companies. Uh, but, um, yeah, universal conscription is like the defining thing of the continued ability to field armies in World War One. When I was a kid in that conscript, as did my grandfather and his grandfather before him. Damn kids these days don't appreciate tradition. Exactly, right? Fucking, fucking hell. So, we're gonna select American infantry, I guess? Let's get them into the trenches. Pre-battle phase, they can be placed into trenches. Uh, as with other objects, clicking the infantry button and who's placed with mine, you can place multiple companies. Left click to place the American infantry into a trench. I guess we'll put them here. For duty. It's a good start, but we still have holes in the line. Uh huh. Each of these can hold two companies. Um. Oh! Reinforcements reporting. Reinforcements ready. We've arrived and await orders. Looks like we're late to the party. Each of these numbers is not a person. Each of them is a company of people. So, what, like a thousand? Uh huh. We are putting eight total. We've got, what? Seven, one, two, three, four, five, six. I don't want to put entirely Americans in here, but that's fine. We'll put an American. Oh, uh, that's eight. That's that's literally. Oh, it didn't go. Reinforcements ready. There we go. Infantry companies are generally all-purpose. Uh, they can attack. Capture, defend, or capture, however, is something necessary to bring in specialists for specific jobs. Specialists units have smaller company sizes, but make up for it by having more health and morale than normal infantry. There are two types, raiders, or grenadiers for the Germans, and flamethrowers, or stormtroopers for the German. Flamethrowers are a stereotypically German World War I invention. I'm just going to point that out. Um, 
the if I'm remembering my reading correctly, uh, the Oxford Illustrated History says that the British Army, at least, never used flamethrowers. Also, though, now, someone who knows more about, um, you know, the hardware of World War One should should tell help out here. But weren't grenades like standard issue? Like the grenade attachment to rifles is like quite famously a big deal. From outside, the raiders are one of the few years that can fire on entrenched enemy troops from outside. They are, however, vulnerable uh, to long range everything. Place just two American raiders wherever the hell I want. Alright, I guess we'll put one here and one there. If the lines are sufficiently mad for now, we'll hold back the rest of our men as reinforcements so that we can react once the battle starts. We'll also hold back our tanks. Let them be, uh,. A surprise for the Germans. As with infantry, tanks cost less to pay place in the pre-battle phase, unlike infantry, tanks can be placed anywhere in friendly territory. Our siege artillery have been moved from this battlefield to cover another portion of the front. We'll have to do without for this encounter. Because of the high cost and randomness of fire, it is best used when you are the attacker. Oh, okay. So they're specifying mortars as defensive artillery and um, siege bombardments as offensive um, artillery. Okay. I explained supply in pre-battle is a key element of the game, and supply you do not spend in pre-battle will be added to the reserve once battle starts. This balance need to have more defensive built-in pre-battle versus the need for reinforcements, artillery, aircraft, and other ability used during the battle. Waiting was hell. With nothing to do, your mind could take you to some dark places. While our intel people mostly got it right, sometimes the only clue we had that a battle was about to start was the sudden silence of the artillery. If the wind in the factory stopped work for 20 minutes, uh, the Allies would lose the war. Joseph Joffre, Marshal of France. We have received warnings that the Germans will likely attack soon. During the transition to the tactical battle phase, all of the objects you built are you placed are built, and the troops you deploy will man the trenches. Normally, the battle clock will begin counting down, but we have paused it for the tutorial, and will automatically do so when gameplay is resumed to give you time to read and react. We tell how much experience a soldier had by how they handled waiting. Sometimes our intel was to the hour. Sometimes you only knew the battle started because the bombardment stopped. Either way, we kept busy in the trenches waiting for the whistle to sound. Position phase includes any days of siege bombardment that was purchased in pre-battle for both players. Bombardments have a chance to destroy pre-placed trenches and the men inside them, as well as any nearby emplacements. Try to use the information they have to de try and determine how well the battle will go before we even start. Um, the red central powers and blue bars at the top of each screen show the combat potential for both sides related to each other, representing available units and supply for both. A longer bar indicates more available firepower than the opponent. As units are defeated and supply is spent, the bars will deplete to show current values. So we are currently outnumbered, but still a stalemate. So I've kind of gotten to it in the Discord before. Speaking of which, you should join there. We have cool conversations. I am fascinated with the cultural memory of World War One being that middle and upper class women, uh, usually summed up as women, which lol, enter the workforce. Yes. This is absolutely a super important point. A lot of the writings and statements refer to middle and upper middle particularly. I think probably less so like upper upper class women, but middle and upper middle class white women as women enter the workforce. That is a much more new... I tried to talk about this during Valiant Hearts and did not do a great job of it, but uh, I think since then, think on it, I pinned that down, right? The factory work uh, is notable because it is middle and upper middle class white women entering that work. And therefore, right, 
uh, when you if you propose a link to like suffrage movements, um, notably it is middle and upper middle class white women that become the figureheads of those movements, despite the work of working class women and women of color for decades, at the minimum, prior to that. And there's a huge debate over women working as factory and farm workers versus reproductive labor as repeopling the nation and providing future soldiers, because that's not weird at all. It's, it's super weird, what are we talking about? Anyway, many other factors play into winning a battle, skill at giving orders, technological advances, and morale all play a role. Knowing when to stop fighting is sometimes as important as pushing forward. The top part in the uh, victory level, uh, this, sorry, the top part is the victory level meter. This represents a range of potential victory levels from great loss to great victory. The pointer will adjust based on scores earned by both sides and their relation to each other. Where the pointer rests is the victory level you would achieve if a ceasefire is agreed upon. So, you know, stalemate, minor victory, victory, major victory, great victory. God, you have to push it all the way to there. <sighs> ah. <laughs> the strategists were men who poured over stacks of paper, maps, radio transcripts, and pictures taken for planes. Some took all of that and told us we were likely to win or lose. Sometimes it felt like they forgot the most important part, the human will to survive. Okay, but that's literally what we're doing. In France, it was called Mobilisation des de Berceaux, I think? I don't know, I don't speak French. Uh, mobilization of Cradles. Motherhood was understood as the equivalent role to soldier, with much more than factory worker was. True. I think in America it's understood a bit differently, but yes. Click on the AI, AI icon to jump to point A. There are multiple locations in our territory that have been designed as important tactical locations. These locations must be protected at all cost. Uh-huh. Every control point has a meter around the outside. As long as each side has an infantry present in the capture radius, either on open ground or in a trench, the meteor will not move. That means you must clear all enemy infantry to capture a point. First, we can tell quite what, what was so important about these seemingly random places of ground. I always thought in most cases the secure points of reinforcement, allowing us to bring new men and uh, weapons into the area quickly. To capture a control point, move an infantry company within the capture radius. The more companies you have in true, but Right? My instinct here, given this game, um, and you know, given my own perspective and background and that of the dominant viewership uh, on Twitch, uh, primarily American and British perspectives uh, are going to be much more impactful in uh, video game popular memories of the war than French perspectives, though both of those are much more influential than German or Russian perspectives. Yeah. Uh, I have no idea, Flowery Space Karate, does this game, same conversation come back around uh, in and after World War II? I have no idea, but I'm sure someone in chat does, so if you do know, please do chime in. Anyway, uh, must feel the meter entirely before leaving the area to capture the point and get the score. If you leave early, the meter will simply revert. Tropic locations are used to coordinate reinforcements. Losing these locations would be an abil a blow to our ability to move troops. Three control region influences the area of the map and the reinforcement costs is linked to it. Control point that is lost or contested cannot be reinforced from. See map sections linked to key points using the slash key. Our reinforcements wait at uh, key positions away from the battlefield. We have mass specific routes into the area via the control points. Gotcha. Would prevent us from using the reinforcement routes. Each region is tied to reinforcement points that are shown on the minimap. If you capture an enemy control point that links to side reinforcement points, you can then use them to reinforce your own troops. Top and bottom points can never be captured. Reinforcements cannot use a point that is in a captured or that wait, that makes no sense. So if we capture the reinforcement point here, we can just use this one. Despite this presumably connecting to another part of the German front. This feels very in isolation. Interestingly, this debate leads to weird things about potentially banning women from working in factories. That was not going to happen. But also surprisingly leads to additional benefits like protection uh, from toxic chemicals and right to breastfeeding breaks. Hooray! Uh huh. Prepare to deploy. 
Reinforcements are based on... Why did we not do this earlier? The supply cost of reinforcements is higher than deploying the same unit in pre-battle. Reinforcements are by the number available, based on what was in the region, available supply, and command cap. So we're gonna just deploy them into the... Oh, that's a bunker right there. Unlike pre-battle, you can be told to reinforce onto open ground or to a trench. You have all available to the point closest to the destination and move there. We've arrived and await orders. Reinforcements are on their way. Make sure they are properly behind defenses when they arrive. We're putting them in the bunker. Commands such as reinforcement, movement, and ability usage can be, still be given while paused, but nothing will happen until the timer resumes. Uh-huh. Click the play button to watch our troops arrive. Okay, they're they're zooming up, zoom zoom. Okay. Uh, formations. Watch them enter the map before continuing. Look at them go. Zoom 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 zoom. Go go go. Into the trench. Go go go. Why are you standing on top of the trench? Don't stand on top of the trench. <laughs> oh, they're clipping through the ground. Oh, oh no. Uh, infantry companies developed column formation called in. It is fast but vulnerable. Skirmish is defensive but uh, slower to move. Cool. War is one of the most vital aspects, or info is one of the most vital aspects of war. We cannot shoot what we cannot see. We cannot plan for an invisible attack. Units and structures can see across the battlefield, but only so far. Where they cannot see is called fog of war. This uh, distance, hills, and trenches all obscure your vision of the battlefield, blocking your ability to see enemy movements. Alright, click the raise and lower balloon button. Single soldier in a basket hanging from a giant bag filled with flammable gas. Those recon soldiers had nerves of steel. Cool. Can I take a look at this now? Timing has paid off. Uh, they have spotted enemy troops. They've got German field artillery. They've got uh, German mortar positions. Since units cannot regain uh, health, lost health or morale, sometimes it's used one defense to weaken the enemy units before they attack. Units in tactical may be selected by the unit tray or clicking on the banner directly. So we've got uh, German infantry. A machine gun nest there, the German German recon team. There's another machine gun nest. There's a field artillery. How much range does this artillery have? Do we know? Fine. Uh, heavy and light artillery have very different uses, etc. Decision barrage. We can also gas attack if we have the oomph or air burst. Fair enough. Um, precision barrage button. To lead moving targets, it takes time to load and fire. It's a target where a moving enemy will be, not where they are. Alternatively, oh, we have to select some infantry. God dang it, I was going to bombard. I was going to try and bombard. Uh, their field artillery? Because that felt more important, or, you know, the enemy heavy artillery. Still, let's try and clip the machine gun nest. Uh-huh. Maybe we'll clip the machine gun nest and hurt it too. That did extremely little, okay. Well, I got a little bit of oomph. Morale 73, cover 60, and uh, numbers 171. Cool. That's a lot of bombardment. Many of our veteran soldiers can tell um, where they're going to... Uh huh. Incoming enemy uh, artillery laws with a brief warning on the ground. Well, units uh, in other trenches uh, take reduced damage. Everyone else can only. only sort of, sort of do stuff. You seem to have the lowest morale. Despite your high cover. Uh huh. 
to your morale, your men, men with high morale will willingly go over the top and rush a German machine gun nest. Those with low morale are likely to break. Why are you withdrawing over open ground? Go for you. It's always better to see a winner friend pull back than to lose them on the battlefield forever. Wounds heal, morale can be refreshed. Uh huh. Drawing a company removes them for play, with also saves on replenishment costs and frees up command cap. Drawing is not instantaneous and they can still take cover and break. Okay. Yep, we got movement here. Looks like they're moving to troops um, around location A. If we'll need some specialized troops to handle the attack, so we're going to select one of these raiders. And then we need to uh, uh, select a valid open trench spot, like right there. Or right click. Sorry, you select that, and then right click there to move there. Cool. We get to watch them move. Despite how much World War has presented a war fought over basically nothing on the right side, all media about pretty substantially anyway has protagonists be allies. I think... Yes, um... Uh, by virtue of, uh, you know, American cultural hegemony. A rolling barrage. Fires several lines of artillery in a set order. Uh, they not only damage and suppress everything along the path, but also drop smoke. You can use this to both damage the enemy and give your infantry cover if they fall behind the progressing shell lines. Uh huh. Uh huh. There, do you see? The Germans are going over the top. Prepare the trenches. Uh, refer to the act of leaving the trenches to attack the enemy through no man's land. This can cause a lot of casualties unless they're supported by artillery fire, aircraft, or other abilities that distract enemy fire. Our placements are positioned admirably. They'll pay a heavy cost to approach our trench lines. Uh huh. They'll automatically fire at whoever's closest. Uh, you can manually choose targets by selecting the banner and right clicking a target. It is useful if you want to focus on enemy specialists or weakened troops. Okay. Decide if your units can stop the attack before it arrives, or if you need to support the defensive line with your artillery abilities as cost supply. Find into the firing step and ready to rifles. Although the lightning lingering dust of smoke from the artillery barrages, we can make out Germans running towards us. Our machine guns open fire, and we soon join them. Firing trenches have two positions. Firing step, left banner position, and reserve. Uh, right banner position. Only the firing step position can fire on incoming enemies. Use the, swap te the swap position button to swap companies between the position. This is useful if, for example, you want your more damaging specialist units to take the step when enemies enter close range. We have new orders. On the line. Uh huh. Defeat the oncoming attack wave. So I actually want them to swap as soon as you can. And then we've got that. And then can I select an artillery? That's not a valid artillery spot. The fire barrage, you know, there. How much oomph does that do? They run straight into it. Okay, they have very short range. I understand. Wow. Yeah, this is brutal. And my machine gun is almost busted. Damn it. I don't want to lose a machine gun here if I can avoid it, but... I don't know that I'm going to get a choice. Yep. I said I don't know if I'm going to get a choice in the matter. Artillery isn't a bunch of damage. You can uh, use suppression. Default abilities for both light and heavy artillery will disable the ability of all infantry emplacements and artillery to fire their weapons. This includes enemy and friendly units. Um... Light artillery is far better at suppression than heavy, but both can do it. Mm. 
The incoming assault is larger than expected. I believe it's time to field some of our tanks. Uh, while primarily our offensive, tanks are also useful on defense as both a mobile turret and to provide morale uh, bonuses to your troops. A machine gun French tank. Can I deploy them? Where can I deploy them? Will not be able to enter near a contested control point. Okay, so if they're in this area, I can't do anything. Can I just, like, drop them on the outside here where the thing used to be? Literally, what if I just dropped two of them, like, one, two? Our boys really loved those contraptions. I meant they were great to hide behind on the way to the German trenches. It was very reassuring to have them around. Tanks provide a morale bonus to them. Because, yeah. Watch your tanks enter the map. They're on the map. Get those tanks into position and stop the incoming wave. There's That's a big wave. Um, I have completely lost... Uh, I also want to select this, these guys and move them over here. Select these guys, move them over, over here. And our American specialists are okay. And my machine gun nests are about to open fire here, but my front ones have been lost already, so that's annoying. And there, that just mauls them. Holy crap. There, yeah, I succeeded. I stopped it. Are there more people coming in? Oh, there's a lot more coming in. Understood. Where are our artillery coming in from? Oh. Uh, our balloons are pointing incoming fire planes. Balloons are very vulnerable to fighters, but we don't know yet um, what their mission is. Cool. Probably wise to get on the radio to command and have them scramble some aircraft of our own. Cool. Um, each nation seems to have their own ideas about planes. I've seen pilots back home doing stunts for fun, but those boys had nothing on the pilots here. Gotcha. So we want to select an air superiority mission, right? Individual missions show many air wings are currently active and remain duration, and the refuel meter shows if any are currently refueling and about to become available again. Brasswood radio to the airfield and request a mission. Once in the air, there was no way for the pilot to receive new orders, so he had to do his best to re complete the mission and return. Uh-huh. Back up with the closest if you're going. Select them where they appear to be targeting instead of where they are. So if I select them over here. Unlike other So I have the final attack wave, we want to back up here. Back up the tank. There's the French fighters. Oh, well, there went one of our planes. That's bad. And there's a bunch of German troops coming in. Um, our morale's good. Our reinforcements are good. Our tank health is bad. I want to back this tank up if I can. Ah, there's no good way to do that. Damn. I just need to get it to kind of track backwards. Okay, your morale broke, you're running away. Dang. Like, this is brutal. I mean, good lord. 
The reinforcements are slowing down and the soldiers are showing signs of low morale. I believe their momentum is faltering. The attacker has the option to cease fire at any time to end the battle and total the score. The defender can only surrender, which gives up all the control points that command trench to the enemy. Uh, battles can also time out. When it reaches zero, you're out of daylight and the battle ends. I said, uh, the team of the tour, uh, reports that Germans are beginning to back off, pull back, and we upheld them off. Should we counterattack? Uh, or call it a day. Hooray! While I applauded their bravery for facing our machine guns, I could not fathom what they hoped to gain with all that loss of life. When all was said and done, we held, they gave up, and the line did not move. Enemy ceasefire. Battles in this one war are won by inches, not miles. In this society, because losses and end hostilities for now, our forces have taken some damage, but we can fight again another day. With an archival photograph of the, um, you know, that guy's doing great. Look at those crazy eyes. Uh huh. This provides an overview. The debris screen provides an overview of how well you did in the battle is broken into two scenes. The first will show your overall score and win level, while the second detail uh, casualties, replacement costs, and supply use. So we won a major victory, I guess? Allies casual. Central powers casualties 430, ally casualties 90. Wow. And we won a bunch of medals. They won perseverance and efficiency medal. It's not just your level of victory that people back home count for, uh, it's also casualty counts. Even if you achieve a great victory, the people will never accept a commander who frivolously spends human life to achieve it. National will change up and down. A lot of German infantry just got mauled, but the German stormtroopers did not even get touched. I lost, my tanks did not do super well though. Well, um, did the game just crash? There we go. Nope, the game was just um, frozen and flash give, trying to give me a seizure. George M. Cohen. Right up there, and your grand old fag, and give my regards to Broadway, and you know, uh, lots of World War I relevant. Morale songs. Battles are expensive endeavors, both in monetary and human costs. While our defense was successful, we should never forget the lives that were lost to bring about our victory. After the battle, you will be presented with the results. In most cases, the cost of the battle will be gold reserves, supply, and national will. Uh, if the attacker achieves a great victory, the defending region will lose a star as well. We had ample warning this time, and the German attack seemed more like a scouting probe than a full-scale assault. But even minor battles cost lives. The men are tired, they will need time to recuperate. Battle fatigue uh, lowers infantry morale in the region until your next turn. That's an important thing. German forces are moving, hopefully they have not grown wise to a pl our plan and will move as expected. Mm-hmm. New turn begins, June 1918. Alright, that confirms that it is um, one one thing per... Th or one, I guess, what? One month per turn? Research points, plus one and 1,200 new gold reserves. 
We'll take a look at what those uh, actually mean after a brief ad break. So we do take ad breaks every hour here. Um, it's been two hours. Oops. But that means I need to stand up, stretch, and I recommend you all do the same. If you've been enjoying this, do make sure you hit that follow button. We're going to be playing through the rest of the tutorial, taking a look here. Um, this seems, well, largely what I expected. Um, but that's not exclusively or entirely a bad thing. So, uh, once again, um, don't go anywhere. We'll be back in just a couple of minutes uh, with more Great War Western Front. I shall leave you, of course, with some snails. Alright, be back soon! Welcome back, gang. Hope everyone's doing well. Hope that I break past smoothly and quickly. I have acquired pretzels. Showing my true allegiance to Schneiders of Hanover and nobody else. Munch, crunch, crunch. Alright. If you are just tuning in, welcome. Welcome to League of History. I'm Adam. We are exploring World War I through video games. This week we are playing the Great War Western Front, which um, we are currently working through the tutorial of. It has been funky. Right? Uh, one thing that struck me during the ad break um, is how much of the 
quote unquote historical information, right? We've been receiving. Talking about, uh, you know, MacArthur and uh, Lieutenant Laurent and all these other, right, people with portraits and in some cases being explicitly historical figures. Uh, right, which, and the opening cutscene for the tutorial has a voiceover, presumably by, you know, a fictionalized real, a fictionalized person who is plausibly real. That was not an archival, that was not historical audio. Firstly, the audio quality is too good. Just flat out, the audio quality was way too good um, for a 1910s recording. Secondly, let me just make sure that's good, yep. Um, secondly, it was too neat. Like, he talked like someone reading a script that was summarizing the war, not like a real person being interviewed about the war. And there's no way that was real, real audio footage, and I'll be shocked if I'm wrong on that. Um, but it speaks a little bit to the, already we're seeing the importance of the memoir, real or fictionalized, as a tool of right, humanizing what is generally an extremely impersonal cost. How dare you, when I hold silences with the ghost of Pershing, the voices in my head are perfectly clear. Look, the people I study lived too long ago. The seances don't work anymore. I, I'm, this is why this is why I'm not a 20th century historian. I can't do the seances right. I'll leave it to the 20th century historians to tell me how well the ghost of the ghost of John Pershing speaks. Anyway, Let's hop back into the tutorial here. Um, we're pretty good at them. Damn. I'm jealous. Houdini would like a word. <laughs> yep. Let's hop back into the game now. I've got a feeling we're about to do a big attack this turn. So, um, we're gonna see... We're gonna, we're gonna see how well I do at that. My bet is not very. Chapter 5. Hard Choices and Research. Well, the men will require time to repair any damage to the region they control. Depending on the damage, the labor can be extensive, so it may take more than one month to bring a region back to full strength. Start of each turn, any damaged areas that were not involved in any sort of defensive action will recover a star. It means that once you take a star from an enemy territory, you will need to attack that region at least once each turn to prevent the stars from regenerating. I think that's actually, the more I think on that, the more clever that is, because we already saw you can attack and not commit very much to that fight and immediately end, and it will not be a huge swing either way. It'll burn supply, but that's about it, um, and it will prevent stars from regenerating. It seems our men have recovered from their fatigue, but the enemy is still exhausted. We can use this to our advantage. Battle fatigue regenerates at the beginning of your turn for your regions. Enemy battle fatigue regenerates on the start of their turn. That means you can attack a fatigued enemy region with fresh troops with the right planning. Of course, this also means that the enemy can do the same to you. Uh-huh. As officers, we're faced with many difficult uh, decisions. There are many things to weigh when making choices, but I find that choosing what best supports our plan for the war effort to be the correct method. No one here will judge you based on your choices. We leave that to history.
はいはい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、The turnover rate of officers in the French army in World War I? Because officers can and did get replaced rapidly. Across all levels. Because their superiors didn't like the choices they made. No one will judge you except the newspapers, the populace, the government, and your direct superiors. On a more general level, this is a super problematic framing, right? The idea that military and political uh, leaders cannot, will not, and should not hold each other accountable for making dumbass choices is a problem. And the psychologists, yeah. Um, right, we, we see this sort of rhetoric a lot whenever there's a scandal. Cough, cough, the entire United States, cough, cough, cough. Cough, cough. Uh, current political events, hack, choke, cough. Um. Don't leave it to, as a historian, we should not leave it to history. As a um, citizen, we should not leave it to history. As a game, it's not only, um, Dumb as hell to not have, you know, a negative here of people, or a negative here of people judging you, um, to make that choice actually have consequences. Uh, but you know, I would love 800 gold reserves right now, so we're gonna, we're gonna be sneaky sneak, sneak sneak. I might either have the mistaken impression that choices were black and white, good or bad. But I learned quickly that in the war, that life wasn't that simple. All choices were just people trying to solve problems with the information they had, while causing the least amount of harm they could. Remember, there is no right or wrong answer in a hard choice event. Those who faced the same choice in history made their decision and dealt with the consequences. Well, that doesn't mean there wasn't a right or wrong choice. I just always like, I have to live with it. Yeah, I'm curious whether the event is a randomized one. It almost certainly is. Um, the decision to keep our discoveries classified is sure that we'll have the upper hand against our enemies and it the need to overspend on counterintelligence. We now release the data after the war. R&D is a valid part of war. If we can find a new combat strategy or develop a new weapon, we can gain an edge in battle and win this It's 1918! What are you talking about? Broken down the research into display of potential avenues we can pursue. We can't possibly research everything, so as well, we can concentrate on research that will fit within our plan strategies for victory. Oh boy. Logistics. Logistics. Uh huh. So we have flights. We have trenches. We have engineering, which looks like it's mostly artillery. Um, and we have. Intel, which does a bunch of stuff there, and we have infantry, which does a bunch of stuff there.
Uh-huh. Each elite infantry company gets uh, a specialized sniper. Makeshift filter. We don't have... We don't have gas masks yet. Razor has been down to six focus pressure study, infantry flight, trench warfare, engineering, logistics, and intelligence. We're too lower ranked to be asked our opinions about what the scientists and engineers were doing, but that didn't mean we weren't interesting. interested. So the boys wanted more and better tanks, while others wanted planes. For my part, I was hoping to see better helmets and rifles so we could be sure to get home in one piece once the war ended. Uh huh. Undermining would be the best choice for our research focus. Alright. Death from below. Unlost the ability to perform an undermining attack in field commander battles. Set up and detonate a massive explosion that destroys nearly anything in the area, including most trenches. The target is placed in pre battle and detonated during the battle. The French engineers told me about undermining. They dig a tunnel as quickly as possible from our lines to a position under the enemy trenches. They have to be careful since the enemy can hear them digging. Once finished, the tunnel is packed with explosives and then detonated. Makes a really big hole, but a lot less German trenches. Hey look, offensive battles. Seems our enemy has not been idle, uh, reporting recent enemy activity in the target area. That's quite a lot. We'll create new infantry, uh... Let's see, uh, I've destroyed new infantry corps as well as aircraft wings around the area. This will make our original attack more difficult. However, we have some extra troops positioned at Cezanne. Attacking from the south should divide their forces and tire out their men. During doing so, weakens them to further attack from a different direction. Alright, I thought that experience would numb me to the fear of a foreign attack, but they never did. There is no way to get used to climbing out of a trench or running into a hail of gunfire while avoiding death by barbed wire. Click the auto resolve button. Alright, alright. Results are in question, or you aren't going for a great victory? Well, fine. National will, we all lost a bunch of stuff. We lost a bunch of stuff. We lost a bunch of stuff. Well done, the goal is not to always to completely take control of a region. Sometimes it's better to complete small goals with an eye towards a bigger picture. So they lost, they lost their air wing. Oh, that's a big deal. Felt like we've been fighting for days, but when the smoke cleared, I realized it had only been a few hours. Everyone was exhausted. I think many of us have begun to understand just how much of a toll this war must have taken. People have been fighting it for years before we arrive. So we have battle fatigue. Gains a level of battle fatigue, which reduces the max morale for all infantry in the region. By attacking the same region from multiple directions, you can stack fatigue. The larger the force in the region, the more supply that is required to fill them at full strength. The larger the force can drain a global supply rank very quickly, especially when you pursue multiple battles. Supply must be manufactured back home, and this takes gold. You need to purchase supply. The French work quickly to make the ammunition uniforms, food, and other supplies we need to keep fighting. Tanks and aircrafts were shipped across the channel for the British Army. Our own hometown shipped out goods for us to use, though it took some time for us to arrive. In a way, our civilian countrymen were fighting with us. Right? Like, this is all MacArthur supposedly talking to someone after the fact. Right? So this is a memoir. That's not actually a memoir. Anyway, click the purchase button to close the menu. We have built up our forces. We have replenished our supply. We are ready. From our central square at Montmorey. And time to attack. Wow. Likely outcome is stalemate, but it could turn into a pretty big victory. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What do we face? A lot of conscripts, two flamethrowers, two raiders, six tanks, and a bunch of artillery. This should be interesting. I'll be curious to see how this battle goes. Because we wildly outnumber them, but they have a lot of oomph, and we're gonna um, undermine their uh, 
Hopefully straight into their center. Bombard the hell out of their heavy artillery, I think. And then go from there. Because it looks like we have one siege artillery. Like, we we should just win this. They also have nothing to stop um, my air wings. So I can just run bombing missions. Welcome to the trenches. Our boys are putting the finishing touches on our defenses. So now's the time to get your bearings. Uh-huh. Trenches have the smell of fresh earth, uh, gunpowder, sweat, and a hint of blood. We need to expect this time, but the distress from waiting never got easier. If you fight multiple battles on the same front, the map and trench layer will persist from one battle to the next, as well as the battle scars you or the enemy create. When fighting as the attacker, your trench lines don't need to be as sophisticated. Make sure you build at least some defense so the enemy can't turn the tables on you. Mm-hmm. While they want the entire region con uh, control secured, they recommend we capture point Y first. Short term gold. While a great victory is needed to reduce the reuse of sometimes achieving a small victory is better than the long one. Even a minor victory will will down the enemy national will, which is a step towards winning. Yep, support structures, undermine explosives for a lot of money. I think we drop it here, because that blows out the bunker. That will blow out all their barbed wire. Alright, then we go pre-battle bombardment. One day of pre-battle bombardment. And then we, um... Uh-huh. Command and block out. Uh-huh. Cool. Troop tab, uh-huh. Infantry companies can be placed into trenches while anything else can be local. Uh, okay. Goal is to take enemy territory. Our men must reach that territory safely. Remember to plan for support. Okay. Building balloons to scout them all out will make it life easier. And then we just need to play some stuff. So we've got a balloon there already. We've got a balloon there already. So how much can we actually see? I feel like we can see most things already, right? Place troops and support structures. What troops do we currently have? We have all the artillery on the field already. Um, how much field artillery do we have? We have two there. Let's look at troop deployments. so much for them. Let's select the American infantry now. Because if I want to run... If I want to... Do I run a bunch of American troops up here with a tank and try and push into this side? I think I do. Let me... Mm -hmm. Can crush barbed wire, can fire over basic firing trenches. Um, sorry. Okay. 
Oh, it doesn't let me put tanks in here. That's fine. We can run the tanks. I'm gonna put two tanks there. And then I'm gonna put some American specialist troops over here. I guess the same deal is right with the goals we wanna push up through here. I will put one tank with these lads. I'll put one more American. Well, we'll put them there. Okay. Um, I don't think we have any new structures to put up here. What other support structures can I put? Let's do that. Um, I should have plenty of oomph. I've got a bunch of artillery on the field already. And barbed wire can only go into friendly areas. I understand. We don't need that right now. Okay. Uh, I have nothing right here, do I? I've got a French machine gun. That's fine. We can reinforce into there if we need. Machine guns are taken through grit and determination. Douglas Haig, the first Earl of Haig. Um, British Field Marshal. Yeah, um, that's... Yep. See, blockhouse trenches, barbed wire, make sure they are... Uh-huh. Blockhouse trenches, barbed wire, and we can be sure they are well manned. This will not be easy. Trenches offer a distinct defensive advantage, especially when supported by barbed wire and artillery. Generally advisable to approach a position with twice the number of companies as an enemy has there. In addition, supporting your own approach with artillery or tanks will greatly help. Click the bombardment tab. Let's try our uh, directed siege artillery assaults and undermining. Cool, they work similar to artillery strikes, and then you place the button and place down a targeting decal. Unlike normal artillery strikes, the shot delay is much longer and easily avoided. And uh, we can undermine that. And there's that! We have blown them to smithereens. Which uh, appears to open up an option right in here for that shell area, right? Gives us a good chance to push in basically here and then start taking the trenches. That was indeed impressive, but their area is still well secured. Click the air support tab. I assume we're going to bomb them. Bombers are best used to destroy enemy defensive positions. Mm-hmm. Bombs are highly effective at taking out solitary targets, um, stationary targets, but if we spot any enemy fighters, that we may be into trouble. So I think we use it to take out the front... Right, I think we use it to take out this front machine gun nest. Either that or the artillery. Or both? Split the difference? Now we'll just drop it. We'll drop it primarily on the machine gun nest. Well done. All that remains is using knowledge and experience we have gained to... Uh-huh, we're ready to go. Send troops over the top and secure uh, number Y. Uh-huh. I want to use take out this... Perfect. Um, now, let's select... Let's start by selecting the tanks, yeah? Um, where are their... So there's, uh, Stormtroopers there. That completely hit the wrong guy, but that's fine. I'll take it. There's nothing there, there's... 
There's an artillery nest there, but that's it. So let's... Yes, let's start moving these tanks, yeah? Three there. And I'd love for these guys to go on the flank along with everyone. Basically just everyone. These guys are gonna, I guess, just go mid. Because they're just gonna go mid and then we just don't worry about anyone. We'll send these two troops into here. Um, I would also love to run another bombing mission directly onto here. If we can break that, it would be hugely impactful. New orders incoming. Location confirmed. Ugh, the machine gun's still up. That's too dangerous. With speed. That's entirely too dangerous. Uh, I would love to attack here. Meanwhile, this is going to be the core of everything. It's going to go straight into here. Um, and then we can also troop support. Uh, I don't feel like I need that yet. Ugh. What does this tank do? This tank is not in good position. I need to get out of machine gun range, lest it break. Uh, I would love for you to withdraw. Oh, we just got it. Perfect. How's this fight going? Perfect, we're able to push up. Uh, I would like to select two of you to attack this. And what else can I do? Air support, another bombing run onto this machine gun nest would be awesome. Their balloons are down. Their balloons are not down. All right, let's try that again. Ready for orders. Tenez-vous prêt. En position de tir. Because I, if I can get behind the nest... Actually, I am behind the nest. Like, this is not... Oh, can I... How do I withdraw you? Yes, yes, yes. I'm aware that I need to do that. Oh, damn it. Stop standing in the center. Uh, I would love to attack. Oh, that's a flamethrower unit. We have new orders. On the line. You need to back the hell up. Uh, I would like to send another American unit into here. Ready Ready on the fire staff. Where are my other American or my two co companies there? They're not alive. Where's the other tank? Can attack here. Ah, that's... Yep, just... Brutal. You're able to fire into these things, aren't you? Uh, where's my artillery fire? I forgot to artillery barrage these places. That was my bad. Suppression barrage and... Uh, let's just precision barrage that again, and that- I am drinking water! And another compliment. We're just gonna bombard the hell out of them, actually. And then once we've captured this, we can reinforce from here. Which will be really impactful. Uh, let's also have one of these American companies just take out the... Now ah, we'll have maybe the French company try and bust down. 
Also, I'd love for this guy to be able to withdraw. How do I withdraw? Company withdraw. Thank you. And we'll probably have this tank. Actually, we can if we can stand inside that, that would be hugely impactful. Uh, this French company can also withdraw. And then we will look at reinforcing... Is that close enough? Is that actually capturing? Like, there's no infantry I can see in the area. Like, what's happening? Let me just re resupply over here with a bunch of French infantry and then... Two American companies and then we'll roll them in with another tank uh, and we'll go from there. Oh, the my balloons just lowered. Uh, that was done with me. How do I capture this control infantry? There's no in there's no one left in here. What the heck is happening? Like, do we see anyone here? Do, do we see anyone else here? Uh, anyway, we do have a compliment. Uh, like, honestly, in terms of, like, looking at what appear to be relatively effective strategies, the idea of pulling one of these big, big chunks of people forward, uh, actually, let's run them into here, that's protected. Right, there's no one. There's no one here. Where are these companies that are supposedly preventing we have new Get them from capturing the control point? Where are these companies? There's. Is it just that there's one balloon there? Is that all that it is? I mean, if it is, that's eminently fixable. But right, like, this is doing the, um... This is doing a lot useful in terms of, like, constructing... Uh, the... In terms of constructing uh, a good sense on a high level of what, like, successful operations might end up doing and looking like. Like, it, it bears pointing that out, but, like, as a tactics game that's doing this, like, this is being really successful. I'm just not sure what I'm missing here to help capture this control point. Like, I got plenty of infantry in the area. Hello? There are no German companies in the area. I can see into the trenches and there's nothing. So, I just... Um, oh, never mind. Never mind, found them. Oh, well, you died. Uh, the enemy is offering to surrender. Fine. We just capture everything. Uh, that was meh. Sweet! We have pushed back the enemy and taken ground. The people back home will see this as a success. So there was just two guys hiding, there was two, there was two companies hiding in a bunker, pretending we wouldn't notice them. We cost, it cost a lot though. I did not do a great job. I did pretty good. But I didn't do great. They got... Perseverance. 
They got efficiency, we got more efficiency, we got more everything. Oh, and then we have an epilepsy warning that you all don't have to worry about, but I do. There we go. The fact that when I click to go back to world map, the screen starts flashing at a high rate is extremely bad. Um, you, mo you gotta patch that. Like, you just gotta. The region is secure. A man has managed to support the, push the German line back by a significant amount despite the cost. Hooray! Information bulletin. Operation Chateau Saumar is now back under French control. Excellent work. We are not done, but this is another step towards pushing the Germans out of France. When you attack, take control of a new region, part of your forces from the attacking region are automatically moved into it to keep it defended, and the star level is returned to 1. All enemy forces retreat to a nearby friendly region except siege artillery. So, already there, they've got uh, several companies. They had an intact supply depot and a field hospital. Uh, if they're existing structures, those structures are taken over by the new owner. They can research the ability to destroy them before the enemy can take them over. Gotcha. Well done, your men were green when you arrived on these shores, and you've managed to push back the enemy with only a small amount of training. Uh-huh. And we have an encyclopedia. And the encyclopedia seems to be based on... Huh. That's an interesting way of doing it. That's an interesting way of doing it. So, you did get a little bit of flashing too. Boo. I didn't see any on OBS, but yeah. Um, that's a thing to be in, keep an eye on all the way through. They do seem to have flashing whenever you exit a field battle. Anyway, right? This feels like... This feels like this should be a historical encyclopedia, right? Right? I mean, if you click on the... Uh-huh. There's a little bit. There's a little bit of work here in the world encyclopedia. The Central Powers, the Allied Nations... Well, your command covers the Western Front of World War I, the rest of the world is not at rest. Various other things. Uh, various major event strategies and trials may occur in other parts of the world that will occasionally be revealed. There are also maybe times when you're presented with missions to accomplish or choices to make. There are six event types. Uh, choice. You'll be presented with two options. Your choice determines the outcome. Headline. Front page news from around the world based on the turn date. Historical. A major event in history may grant rewards or penalties. Objective. Grants award or completion. Region, special effects such as bad weather or a festival for a limited time in a specific place, a tutorial, or a player action. There are more events uh, than there are turns, so there will be uh, bonus stuff. Hooray. Right, for the most part, this is, like, it's structured like it's a historical encyclopedia, you know, with the uh, archival photographs. And mostly the photographs. Honestly, mostly mostly just photographs. And then the actual thing is fully uh, gameplay related, with only occasional things here uh, saying that. Russia lost its Tsar, uh-huh. Like, these are short. The war was the birthplace of modern surgery, where necessity of inventions such as blood banks and skin grafts. The most first time doctors banks look at psychological trauma instead of physical, that, simplistic. War all but destroyed the quote-unquote upper class in many nations. No. Sort of. Not really. Kind of. 
The Russian, Ottoman, Austro-Hungarian, and German empires were no more. The countries of Armenia, Poland, Estonia, Finland, Georgia, Latvia, Lithuania, Ukraine, and Yugoslavia were newly created or gained independence. Russia lost its Tsar, held a re revolution, became the Soviet Union. Germany decreased in size and was forced to play reparations, destroyed the economy, and upended the government, etc. Japan, as part of the Allied nations, seized uh, the Mariana, Carolina, and Marshall Islands. Uh, there are still unexploded ammo, and that's bad. And anti war sediment rose dramatically in most countries after the war ended. These are. these feel simplistic, right? Right? Chapter 8 Continuing the War. Uh, nothing more to teach you, your action on the battlefield, proving the Americans already are able to do. Da, da, da. Experience new challenges. Hooray. In the end, I still don't know exactly the reasons why the Great War started, or what it was intended to accomplish. But I do know what the results were. Four empires that crumbled into history, and a bunch of changed borders. Those changes couldn't wipe away the hard feelings that simmered after the war ended. I decided to continue my military career and eventually earn the rank of captain. Perhaps not the smartest move, as those hard feelings boiled over into another world war only a little over 20 years later. What a strange... Let me, let me exit the... Let's exit the main menu. Let's exit, exit the main menu, because that feels... more interesting. What are these historical battles? I am curious what they mean by historical battles here. So we have, um, Ypres, so a high tax value target, the town of Ypres in western Belgium saw much conflict, frustrated with the stalemate, German chemist Valtunanst suggested using gas to empty the opposing trenches. While many times were discussed, chlorine was chosen as it could be found in high quantities. 5 p.m. on April 22, 1915, the German lines opened cylinders and poured 160 tons of gas, of gas onto the battlefield, the first use of chemical weapons on the western front. Long Way to Temporary is a good song. So we play as the Allies. The Second Battle of Champagne was an attack by the uh, French to use overwhelming manpower to push the Germans out of France. And numbering the Germans 3 to 1, the French opened the withering four day barrage of heavy artillery. They believed the barrage would weaken the German army enough that the French could easily overrun their trenches. Rather than being demoralized, however, the Germans weathered the attack in their bunkers, then raced to their positions once it ended, meeting the French, charging French with a hail of gunfire uh, and a tremendous web of barbed wire. We're done. The song. The Passchendaele Offenses. And continue. Okay. Chat, which one should we do? They're all equally difficult, uh, though. I'm just saying, I maybe, I maybe I'm gonna play on trainee instead of on soldier. I'm just saying. Suggested for players more interesting in the history and pacing than combat. All right, maybe we'll play on standard. We're done for continuity's sake. Hmm. Molly wrote a neat reply to Irish Paddy O, saying like Maloney wants to marry me and so. Catch control point C, have we done? Passchendaele? Oh, 
Why do all recordings have such terrible bass? I'm actually not sure. I'd assume it's something with the uh, way the sound wave gets encoded on the record, but or on the wax cylinder in some cases. You know that answer. Hey, I love chat. Or we just try and not die. Spooky. Random skirmish or a full campaign. Has to do with how tracking works. Alright. Interesting, it's a random one. Okay. Maybe we'll... You know, we'll, we'll try Verdun. Let's try Verdun. This could get real spooky real fast. Ah, drones were typically the first things tracked, so they get buried under everything else. That makes perfect sense. Uh, by 1916, German command came to believe the war may not be winnable through decisive victories in battle, however, they can pick up mass casually as the French army might be pushed to the point of collapse. By 1916, people were also becoming uncertain where they could win the war, period. Right. Like, it was starting to shift uh, from victory or stalemate to stalemate or defeat. So, right, later in 1916, there actually is a German attempt to sue for peace that the Trip uh, roundly rejects on the grounds of it being, um, you know, goofy. Would have saved a lot of lives, but the uh, requests was not... Basically, like, no consequences, and France was not about to let that happen, and even England was like, mm, you sure? How about now? My dearest, your letter asked for truth. I hesitate to speak it since I do not wish to worry you. But from your words, it seems as though the people back home do not hear the reality of what truly happens on the front. I can hope that my words here will remind them of what their husbands, fathers and sons have sacrificed for them. The bombardments are nearly constant, day and night. We have had no communications with the rear for almost three days, nor have we been able to get any rations. Biscuits and chocolate keep us going. But the lack of clean water is worrying. Those shells bring casualties. It is almost impossible to move without having to step over a body. They are left lying where they fell because the stretcher's teams can't get to them without falling prey to the shells themselves. And that risk is reserved for the still living. The smell is overwhelming at times. Dysentery is rampant, and the men blame the corpses and filth. Perhaps rightly so. And yet, through all of this hell, we persevere. The shells destroy the lands, the barbed wire and sometimes the trenches, but the French spirit lives on. We will fight to the last man to protect this place, because it is our home. As long as we live, no Germans will pass our lines. The shells have stopped. We may be moving soon. All my love to you. We will see each other again. Gérard. Would a letter like this even get past the censors? Yeah. A letter like this absolutely could get past the censors. Uh, that's how news of the Somme leaks out. Um, is, you know, it just, uh, there's a delay between official press and uh, British letters uh, back to their families. But yeah, absolutely. Uh, letters like this. That at least strikes me as a plausible letter, though I'm still not persuaded uh, that is actual archival material, since it doesn't provide a citation as to like what archive it comes from. Right? This is why you need to cite your sources in a historical game. I know it's weird to do so, but right, just a, a little pop-up that says if this is actual, like where did we source our things from? Even in the credits, if you cite what archives you're using for these, uh, it'll do a lot of good to help distinguish what is Invented, what is plausible, and what is hist real. Also, is that an actual French accent? I know, right? The French actually spoke like they were French. An interesting experience. Our orders are to take and hold Fort Duamont. German command believes the French will not allow us to keep this ground and will throw everything they have. Uh huh. 
The pointing objects will grant additional supply, population cap, and reinforcements. Using your artillery abilities will make it easier to clear French troops from the fort. Avoid fort guns by traveling inside a trench line during your assault. Command is to take control of this area, and capturing Fort Duamont is the critical first step. Reports indicate that only a maintenance crew is on site, therefore some, get some rest and be ready for tomorrow's coordinated assault. So you're currently still pre-battle. We've got some options there. We have seven minutes to capture the control point, which is here. That's the, the fort gun, I think. So if we push down into here, basically the first step is we need to cross here, get in the trenches, and then clear them out around this way. Right, because the four guns are going to be way too dangerous for us otherwise. So we've got four... Oh, I don't have any extra troops to do. Oh. I don't have any supply, I don't have anything else I can do. It's a time of youth and war, and there's never so much run uh, love around. The Rich Boy by F. Scott Fitzgerald. Obviously inaccurate, as we know French people speak with British accents. True. Our artillery targets are, all artillery batteries target those forts to weaken their defenses. Yep. We're locked in, we know that that's what's gonna happen. There's one, two, three. Oh, this is just scripted. I'm not even doing anything. Wow, that fort hill did not, like, did not even slightly get caught. Need more artillery support? Yep. Oh, siege artillery. Yep. I don't even get to play the game right now. Like, I'm literally not playing the game right now. Our scouts reporting that the focused artillery strikes were mostly ineffective. Those turrets will make short work of our infantry on open ground. Try and stay inside the trenches and work around them while using artillery to help clear the fort. The 24th Brandenburg Regiment is now under your command. We are sending 10 Grenadier and 5 Stormtrooper companies to assist in the capture and holding of the fort. Fort fort guns, 4 of enemy companies inside the blockhouse trenches that can hold up to 5 enemy companies. Heavy field artillery can help clear out enemy companies from trenches. Please tell me you're going to. Please tell me you're going to, like, join them. Please tell me you're going to move inside the trenches, thank you. Our ports that are ready are on the way to provide anti air cup. That's awesome. Um, what extra troops do I have? Uh, let me grab... One more there, and I'm out of supply. Or I'm out of population. Uh, let me also click over here. And we will precision barrage one more time right into here. Are you done? Are you done? Thank you. And that should wipe them, which is going to be good. One there should be enough to wipe. Yeah. Pretty harmlessly at that, too. Fantastic. 
That leaves them in good condition, that leaves them in good condition. Let's be careful about being in here. I was afraid of that. You need to get in, you need to get out. Ugh. I was gonna try and redraw, withdraw, but that's fine. They can both get in there. Perfect, we got those, that's awesome. That should be the big one left to do. Once these folks are inside, we should be able to go. Come on, get inside the trench, thank you. You can go up there. There's probably more in there, which I should be careful of. Perfect. You are extremely low on oomph, so we're gonna have the two of you attack over there. And now that I'm in here, I can grab these guys. Route them into here. Troop deployment, uh, I can... I would love to send a flying bird. Actually, we might withdraw this guy in order to deploy a another. Oh, want to deploy another regular infantry into here. Beautiful. I'm gonna send them this way. I'm gonna take you, we're gonna route you into here. And we're gonna take the flamethrowers and route them into here. Okay. Um sound? There we go. Sounds back. Hooray! Look at how fun this is. Wow, they are just immediately breaking. My German heavy uh, heavy infantry are just rolling them. All right, you're taking a little bit more damage than I would have preferred, but that's acceptable. Cool. The enemy is assaulting. Where? Fort Duma is been secured and we're moving up machine gun teams to help dig in. The French have sabotaged the four turrets, but we are expecting to repair them for our use. Okay, suppress incoming enemy companies from keep them from being able to do that. Engineers uh, can repair the fort guns, but until then, keep men under artillery uh, and keep an eye on the mini map. Okay, do we get access to more people? We get another reinforcement point there, which is awesome. Let's move up anyone who's not moved up yet. And we get them, and we get them. Can we like, help them resupply? Build extra oomph. Still don't have a ton of units, do I? Alright, we're starting with that. How is the gameplay? The gameplay is actually super fun, right? I'm kind of focusing on it because, you know. Let's raise those observational balloons. I don't know that they'll do anything, but nice to have them anyway. Okay. Yep, that did a lot, actually. Turns out that was good. There's reinforcements coming in up there. Up there. Do we have signs of enemy troop movement right now? Not really. There looks like a gathering at point A. Looks like there is primarily a gathering at point A with a little bit... Uh, yep. Who do I... I want you to be up here. 
Where's my other machine guns? Like, this is not a super sustainable area. There's a machine gun nest back there. That's not gonna be helpful. That's not gonna help me much if I'm not careful. Oh, well, now there's a bombardment coming in up there. So, you know. Let me just check, make sure there's nothing off there. Perfect, great. Let me... Come on. Come on, make the crossing. I dare you. I dare you. Now we can grab the light artillery. Or we cannot. Um, Nay. Get out of there. Get out of there. Get out of there. You're locked in. Damn it. I need you to withdraw. You can withdraw. More of. Beautiful. Grab the light artillery. There's more people coming in up there. Where are you running to? If you're running into there, then I can just... If you can test this... I mean, right, you can kind of see it, right, that the... The gameplay is heavily based on... The, uh, ability... Cool. Um, we have a pair of the two machine gun. Four turrets, one cannon, four turrets. Uh, or we can do that. I want that. Save the supplies. You need to move. Why won't they move? Uh, I also need to reinforce, like, way, have way more places. Nay, uh, sorry. I need to re Let me reinforce. Um, also, I'm out of shock troopers, but I can get more there, and I will do one. Uh, Flam and Verfa into here. Well? Also, stop this troop deployment thing. Where are you going? Oh, hell. That's actually quite bad. Um, we can artillery barrage. That's big artillery barrage here, and then um, I need you to withdraw. That we will instead troop deploy the grenadier to here. And then we'll grab these guys, drop them into the trenches. Hello? Artillery has arrived. Commander requested additional artillery and supply and deployed them on our flank. Cool, we have air wings now as well. 
Get in the trenches. Get in the trenches. Stop standing in the open. God damn it. Stop. Why are you so why are you not moving? Get into the goddamn Get into the goddamn trench. Yep, uh, I need artillery bombardment, right. Oh, hell. Wait, I don't want to place them. Just need to bombard this area. And there went another. Bombard this area. Cool. I need to pause for a moment to troop to deploy more troops. I just need to deploy a lot more troops here. Um, I'm gonna deploy into here. Uh, now we are at that air support. We can run a. Strafing mission here, and then order heavy bombardments here, and I mean, if I'm frank, just like Okay, let's let's run slowly. But danger close time? A little bit. Where are we going at over here? Well, well, game is lagging like hell. Gotcha, I don't have the... Yeah. Enemy fighter spotted, damn it. Ugh. Need to immediately pause. You need to head over into here. How's this position doing? There's more reinforcements coming in over here. I need to pay attention to that. Uh, I need to immediately scramble an air superiority mission, right? Also, I can still deploy more troops. Let's just deploy a bunch into here. Wait, why is it not letting me deploy them into the thing? One, two... Okay. Two of them. Let's just start slowly now. Then we can go do this. Where is your... Depression range? Not far enough. Um, pause again. This is the one I need. Drop them there. Stop this. Stop, stop that. Uh, I also need to lower them because, yeah. And then you can uh, suppress. No. So there's a bunch of guys there. There's no one actively walking this. Oh, there's a French company back here. We're just going to assume the French company back here is going to be fine. And then we're going to not worry about it. 
Let's start this slowly. Yeah, the couldn't lower the balloon fast enough. That German bomber is going to be in trouble. Why don't I have enough oomph to do the air support? Like, they're doing the chaos of this really, really nicely. Right? Those are enemy fighters. I just don't have a solution to enemy fighters here. Right? Like, I'm not able to... I'm not able to scramble any fighters because I just don't have anyone... Anyone refueling. There's just no, no one available. Let's deploy two companies into the trenches here, and then we'll do this, and we'll stop that, we'll raise our balloons again, so... Just for a bit so I can see. Let's stop this troop deployment, thank you. Like, they are really communicating the stress of this particular moment. Um, we're doing okay, though. Like, these guys are gonna get mauled by the machine gun nests back here. That's a waste of time. They're fine. Uh, we are actually currently in Verdun, right? We, we are... Right, this is a historical... The game takes place in the entire period, 1914 to 1918. With potentials to run later than that. And so it explores a lot of stuff. Uh, let's take with a heavy artillery. I don't have any ar heavy artillery off cooldown. Let's just do that. Try and soften them up, up a bit. So. Ugh. The fact that there's no... I need to reinforce one guy there. Let's actually reinforce two guys there. Mm-hmm. I can reinforce one from there into there. These guys should be able to wipe them pretty fast, right? Right, both of those troops are, like, really weak. Um... We need to suppress them into the flamethrowers. Suppressing fire there. Suppressing, suppressing alternate fire. Here. Alright, you need to get back here to reinforce these guys. I want them over here. And that's a problem. Look at how many French units there are. And that's a big rolling barrage. Ugh. Don't have the tools to do a rolling barrage. Wow. Can anything talking about the use of machine guns and how devastating that is? Uh, I mean, yes. Like, that, every, every piece of this has talked about how important machine guns are. Uh, like, every World War I game we've talked about has mentioned the hail of machine gun fire as a particularly significant thing. It's just, right, they're, they're primarily treating it as something that exists in fortified positions, which is not a bad call. But not at all a bad call, I think, to specify it on occurring on primarily fortified positions. I mean, we're also seeing the Flammenwerf, right? Lots of flamethrower usage. 
in here. And we'll just drop that there. We'll move you. Hopefully one thing over. Damn it. Get out, get out, get out, get out. Uh, Let's drop one of these in there. That would be huge. Um, dang, that's bad. I just brought in a couple more groups, so... I'm just relying on there being like a company here. Alright, drop two companies here. I'm gonna route one of them up here. Because that's going to be important. I'm going to route the other one to go just like station up behind the barbed wire here. What else needs to happen here? Let's see. So these guys are getting harassed, okay, but that's a flamethrower. It's going to cause a problem if they get to our artillery. Like, I need to have these guys attack that particular group. Meanwhile, since you're not in firing position, why don't we have you route into here? You should be able to actually stay put. What other air support do I have available? Nothing. Everyone's re refueling. All right. Cool, supply and reserves to my position. That's awesome. How many companies can I deploy? Only two more. Hmm. Yeah, right. They they are doing something they are doing something meaningful and interesting, uh in that they are That I'm going to lose that artillery. I don't have a way to suppress this properly. Honestly, I need you to withdraw. Hi. Why is the nest... Ugh. Fat. I need I need elites attacking this company in particular. There's not really good bombardment spots here. There's freaking there's no one attacking down here. It's not useful. I can't reposition them because they're stationary. Okay. Okay, you've taken that. Now I desperately need you to attack this. And I've got more reinforcements on the way. I mean, the thing about machine guns is that ultimately they weren't that devastating. Fixed positions were always relatively easily suppressed by artillery. The trick is you had to stop sh lobbing shells at the enemy when your own people show up. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense, right? Uh, if you don't have artillery, obviously, fixed point machine gun fire is a huge deal. If you don't, like, you just shoot shells at them, and then that kind of fixes the problem, right? Because they have to get down. Where the hell are you all? Ugh, you, are, you guys are currently suppressed. I understand. 
Can I select you to attack these guys if you can? Thank you. And are you attacking them? Thank you. Don't get suppressed, just shoot them. Just shoot them. Don't run face first into flamethrowers. Mother fuck. Every time. You are completely useless. Uh, is there anyone coming this way? They are gunning up for an assault this way, but not generally worried. I love when my... These guys are just suppressed to hell. We load that. And... My... Where the hell is my flamethrower unit? What? Where are you? You're there. What the hell are you doing there? Get back up here. Actually, never mind. Don't go there. Attack the enemy flamethrower unit. And I am currently not in good way. Hello? Oh, you're currently suppressed, aren't you? God damn it. The French are using smoke to cover their assault. We need artillery support. You'd think running face first into flamethrowers would be bad. And yet, here we are. Wait, I can bombard all of their positions, like, super early on. I wasn't paying attention to that part of it. Where is... There's a lot of units there. I need to concentrate a bunch of artillery fire right into this cluster. Why are you still suppressed? How are you still suppressed? Get in the fucking trench. Alright, now. Oh, where's this big army coming in from? Drop that. Is there anyone coming this way? No? I am low on the oomph, though. Like, I'm not gonna lie, I'm super duper low on resources. So. Enemy fighter spotted. I don't think I have a way to do aerial. I have no way to t do that. Yeah, I mean, right, everyone knew machine guns were going to be bad news uh, because they'd seen them in action elsewhere for a while. Why do I have three units just like vibing? Where the hell are you all? What the hell are you all doing? Like, these aren't small forces, um, or weak forces, or whatever. These are pretty substantial. I want them to land in a bunker, so that way... Alright, let's look at the map here. There still is one guy that... okay. Problem solved there. Smoke is still an issue. How are we doing? They walked face first into a uh, bombardment. Love that for us. Uh, I still have no one here to challenge them though. Um. 
Perfect. So you're the ones in firing position. You're doing good. You're doing good. You're not gonna clear that fast enough. But you are at half strength, which means if I can get even up to the trenches as they do, I should do that. Alright, Wolfie, have a good night. We're not gonna go for a whole lot longer um, here. I just wanna try and finish this one objective. However you need to. Go in there. Boom, boom, boom. Sadly, of course, this guy is running the complete opposite direction of what I need, so... Alright, how are we doing? We need... A light bombardment on top of these guys so my grenadiers can maul them. We need a heavy bombardment on top of all these guys. And if I can swing it, I want another light bombardment. Yeah. I, I want to save the supply. Yeah, that did it. Alright, now where can I land a light bombardment? Can I land a heavy bombardment right here? Yeah, I can. Not quite yet. Hold off there. Come on, land the bombardment. Masks? Do I get a control over that? Do I don't think I do, so instead, just run over this way. Who else do I have? I've got three companies of infantry in here just hanging out. Let's route... One of them over there. We'll route uh, one of the heavy bombarders over there. And then we'll uh, drop more artillery on people. Oh. No can do. There we go. Wow. Where else do I have bombardments up from? I don't have you up yet, I don't have you up yet, I don't have any of my bombardments up yet. That's gonna miss, uh, that's annoying. But... You're suppressed, you're almost dead. Don't have anyone off cooldown yet. Girl, the flamethrowers are up, which is really bad. You're fine, you're fine. And I have another bombardment up. Let's try and suppress these guys as they close into here. And then off we go. Perfect. Not there yet, you should go there. Uh, there's the gas. 
There's this shock trooper there. They got one, two units. That's it. All right. This is rough. Like, not gonna lie. I think we want to drop one on top of our own trench because, I don't know. It's the option I have open to me. Uh, we also need to requisition more troops. Let's drop two more people into... Two more companies into here. How are we suppressed? That's annoying. How's this part of the fight going? They've got elite troopers in there. That's very bad. You're suppressed, so you can't do anything. I want you to try and withdraw as soon as you can. Yay, more enemy fighters spotted. Where does this put us? That's... So annoying. I thought the flamethrowers are just kind of rolling over us is very annoying. These this guy is completely fucking useless. Like <sighs> you guys are still suppressed. Where am, where how am I doing? I'm doing okay. Well, if you're trying to attack these trenches, you're just going to lose. Uh... Are you done being suppressed? Are you going to be able to actually like do fucking anything? And you just need to wait for my other bombardments to be up. Like this is... this is a lot. I want to bombard them right as they get close to us. Also, we'll swap these two. For the time being. So we can get the rifles. And how's this front doing? Uh, you're just running around inside, that's not really a huge deal. Um, you are currently suppressed, which is really fucking annoying. How are these guys not affected by their own gas? Like, gas doesn't discriminate. We're just gonna drop a massive bombardment. Honestly, on top of these guys as they get stuck in choke. Let's do that. Yes, there's a bunch of people running this way. That's kind of an issue, but... Do I have any own for aircraft? No, I don't. I can't call any of those, so that's fine.
Honestly, the rifle fire here makes a huge difference. I lost the machine gun nest. Where? Also, I should ask, has anyone attacked down here? Not really. Is there a reason why you are still there? Of all bloody places? Go up here, please. God, that's annoying. Is there a reason why these guys are not going trying to attack these guys? You are still out of fucking range. There's more people making their way in there. I'm gonna have to start routing significant resources over here. I'm gonna put like three people down on top of these. We've lost a balloon. How annoying. Um, what are artilleries are up? This artillery is still up somehow, which is wild. Get out of that. Thank you. There we are, I should be able to outdistance all of them now, and... Literally bombard our own trench, I don't care. There we go. How's up here doing? Uh, we need another artillery. Right on top of these guys. If we can. And are there any other places I should be worried about there being people? We've lost another balloon. Oh, the uh, ally. Yeah. Duh. I need to lower the balloon there. Everyone is currently suppressed. Go into the trenches there. Go into the trenches there. Hello? That's you. Trench. We're gonna drop another one of those there, and then... And then we'll be fine. You should get back into a trench. In this case, this one. Actually, no, this one. Okay, what provisions do I have up? Not much. So super low on supply. Like goddamn. Huh? Is it just a matter of how long I've been? French has ceased our assaults because you know, we've been granted permission to commit more forces. Uh, 20 elite infantry, pop cap, or 400 supply. Alright, so we have 15 minutes to capture there. And then we get supply and reserves to our position. Speaking of which, we have two positions. Uh, we can summon more people. All 
Alright, let's raise the balloons again. We should be okay to do that. They're basically dead. When you get a chance, you'll want to head this way. One and two. Okay. I know I'm not necessarily having the most um, thrilling commentary on the planet, but like, I'm kind of focusing on. Need to kind of focus on the battle. Turns out that's a little bit important. You should be able to route over this way. You should be able to. Uh huh. If an opportunity prevents its, presents itself, commanders request will expand or control the region and capture and hold control point A. Okay, so we need to secure both of those. Do I have the ability to do smoke? I do have a chance to do smoke. And a bunch of material. Okay, so my light... I like how to do that. Who knew making decisions on a battlefield is time consuming? I know, right? But what I can do is... Now that we're on pause, I can um, bombard the hell out of here. We actually have plenty of people right here. If I drop a big snow cloud on top of... If I can capture this one really fast, which might be doable. Like, there's not a lot of oomph here. I don't know, one, two... One mortar company and a bunch of trench companies. Plus some stuff over here. What's over here? We've got a machine gun nest, we've got another machine gun nest. We've got a balloon. We've got two, four... It was like four companies and a crap ton of machine guns. So we basically just... I think since all of our resources are currently right here, that we're gonna just drop a crap ton of oomph right here. ASAP. To try and at least get a good staging area here. Because where can you push to? You can attack any of these positions. Okay. Let's try and bombard some of these heavier positions then. Let's start bombarding some of these positions. Uh, hello? Why can't I... Alright, so that leaves you extremely weak, so let's grab you two and just kind of uh, run at them. While that's covered in smoke, I think I want them to just kind of run at them. We have bombers on route, that's awesome. Oh wow, my guys just got mauled. What the heck, what's the point of us dropping? Why say, hey, you can drop smoke on top of the enemy? And then being like, surprise Jinx, it actually doesn't, surprise, it doesn't actually work. Jerk. That was two companies just wiped. All right, well that's exciting. That was 
You used to watch your cousins play COD Zombies and then proceed to have nightmares about it? Yeah, that sounds more right. Cool. Loved that for me. Um, how's our accumulation of forces doing down here? Where are you going? You're just standing in the middle of nowhere. Why are you positioned there? Hmm. I don't actually know what I can do here uh, as a good way to like push into this. I don't know if I need, I mean I don't need to push into it, but I could push into it. You're coming in right there. Alright, you're gonna go position in there. And then we're gonna start this back up and we're gonna see how this works. They are almost broken, which is good. This is a rough area to attack. Guess let me just drop a smoke in here? Nope, that one can't do that. If I drop a smoke right here, does that give me enough oomph to actually cross this thing? Let's commit these two to that move. And if I have a heavy that can drop that way? No, I don't. You're just too far forward. Guess I'll commit the resources to... Let's... Is there a problem where one of these guys is not? Let me, let me do the thing. Hello? Oh, you're busy. I guess let's just do that, and then... You know, let's just send six companies into this, and we'll hope that that is good enough. Right. We'll just see how that goes. Maybe it won't go super well, but... No, um, rolling barrage starting there and rolling straight over this. Come on, I believe. Beautiful, they are in the trench. Oh, there are three companies in there. Well, they are just infantry, that still is very bad for us. That's alright. We did okay. The, the thing cleared up too fast. Why are they getting out of the trench to make that crossing? What the hell are they doing? 
What the hell are they doing? Yes, let's get out of the trench into machine gun fire to reposition into another trench. Well, that's frustrating. Um, there's like five more battalions than I was expecting. That's alright though, we'll just we'll rebuild, we'll reposition, we'll re-go. And, with a couple of grenadiers doing their thing, and a rifle here that's kind of supplying some suppression, should do okay. Should do okay? Nah, it's not optimal, but it's fine. We've got a bunch of uh, garages up, though. Did we take out both of those? We did. Fantastic. Next up, we do that. Uh, and then... Kind of, we actually want to do that, but... That's fine. We'll do that instead. Just bombard that guy. And then we'll lose a couple of companies, but that'll be okay. We're gonna lose people there, but that commit forced a bunch of resources. What is this guy doing? What is everyone doing? Literally, what is this whole squad doing? Besides getting repeatedly suppressed. Alright, well, best luck with the rest of the scenario that you sort of coast me into doing. True. Uh, but that's fine. This is- I'm having a lot of fun with this, I'll be honest. Ugh. The question I still have is... I just need away from my heavy barrage up for a little bit more. Wait, is my one company of grenadiers about to win against two companies of French infantry? That would be very funny if it did. Alright, and we're running a bit low on supply, but now I want to raise the balloons. Dang it. That was dumb of me. Hit the wrong button. But I don't know what good options I have for offensive artillery here. I guess I should just drop a smoke in here so that way I don't have enough troops ready to do that. Troop supply, I should just put like four, four stacks of infantry here and then the whole squad is just going to run in uh, on the next next opportunity. Also, we are getting so heavily suppressed by our own troops. That is very funny. Uh, okay. So we've got a couple of people here. Honestly, we just need to wait for a bit. Yeah. Wow. Um, hi, people. Spa hi, space people. But yeah, they are dropping just light artillery barrages for no particular reason to suppress us. Let's raise these again, because I'm not dumb. And then, once they're up, I can see again. And I can see again. There we go. What have we got? We've got a uh, heavy artillery that can drop off anywhere in here. We'll do that. But another ar heavy artillery that's able to drop stuff here, so we'll do that. Uh, we've got light artillery, which is able to suppress these guys. 
We've got another light artillery which is also able to suppress these guys. And we've got one more heavy artillery which we're going to use to bomb the hell out of... I can't even get up there to actually bomb the hell out of them. Um... What can I bomb the hell out of over here? This position seems good. That seems relatively good. Alright, well, so we'll let them do one round of bombardments and then, uh... Then we'll have everyone in place to go do the next set of things. Alright. Are those good? Are we getting bombardments? We sure are. Is that their... Good, that's their balloon down. So they don't know what's happening in this area anymore. So we're gonna hit them with a... Light artillery. Is gonna do a rolling barrage up here. That's gonna cover our entry. Let's... Yeah, let's just drop a smoke. We're gonna drop a smoke here that's gonna cover them. Well... I have three companies. I'll just dive the trench. So I can have one more company do that. Uh, since you're here, I want you to make the more dangerous crossing into here. There we go. If we can get four companies into the trenches there, that'll be good. I've got all these guys ready now, so we'll take this one. We'll drop a smoke cloud here. And then we'll drop, well, we'll move you up, and then we're going to drop two companies into here. Perfect. Delightful. They are all under fire, but that is... Predictable. Now they are now under smoke protection, so that should be fine. That should still be fine. You want to actually go this way. Ah, there's a lot of people there. How's this one doing? Okay, not great, but okay. My third heavy artillery over here. Where are we even able to bombard with this? Nothing, nowhere super useful. Maybe we just drop that on, the, on you. Right, because this is just too dangerous of a push. Not unless I'm able to get a different light artillery that drops a significant amount of smoke this direction. Which may be what we need to do. To try and get a couple of flamethrower units into here. Hopefully I time that okay. Um, if do I have enough range to suppress these guys? I do have enough range to suppress these guys. There we go. That's a lot of companies. I moved too soon. God. Damn it, I need to. That's bad. That's real bad. 
Aktionen vorbei ein, Jungs. Für Feuerwalze laden. Feuer! Come on, hit, hit, hit. There we go. Oh. Nice. That worked better than I could have hoped. Is the battle lost? No, battle's not lost. Uh, battle's just doing weird stuff. Um, this one can drop another smoke cloud. Because we're going to push forward into the French troops here. Which means I need you to push up here. And then I can use these two to push up into here under the cover of the smoke. We're doing fine, uh, I just need to keep an eye on my troop number of companies. Right, I am deliberately sacrificing a couple of companies here in the hopes of getting a good position for the continued assault. This is going to be the spooky one, because this is a big counter-offensive, so... And right now I have a lot of forces committed elsewhere. Matter of fact, do I have any? Raid options? I feel like I don't. But I can't force them to slow down. You got the smoke up. Yeah, you've already done you you just Hmm, I need these two to not do that. I need these two to get into this trench ASAP. Alright, now we've got a bunch of troop deployments to do, which are going to be spooky. Nope, troop deployment. Alright, um, we want to do 3, 4, 4, and I have no supply left. I'm gonna have to just continue and pray. I don't think I win this, but I'll just... I'll try. Yep, there's the problem. I'm just really hoping that we get a little bit more supply dropped in here soon. Just, I'm really hoping. Achtung! I'm, I'm really hoping. Wow. That is brutal. Look at them go. I don't have... Uh, I have enough for one more big heavy on bombardment, and that's it. So we're just gonna let them be. We're gonna let those two switch. We lost the machine gun nest. We have no supply left. So these guys are gonna do what they can. Everyone else is just gonna head this way. Like, they shouldn't be able to attack this. These two in the firing position. I should leave them in an okay post to do this. Because these guys are just gonna get mauled. And then with one of these guys, we're actually able to also have them go this way. 
And that should be the last... Uh, there's one more chunk of people in there, isn't there? Come on, if you can maul one company, then... My Grenadier should be able to maul the other company. Reasonably. Come on, I believe. I was afraid of that. Uh, but there's another battalion there. Which is gonna do problems. I just have no oomph left. Where are so many of my troops? Like, hang on. Uh, I resupplied like five companies into here. What am I doing? Wow, and there's just like nobody left. Uh, boo, there's very little I can do here now. Yeah, there's no way I win this. Unfortunately. As close as it is. Right, as close as it is, there's just nothing I can actually do here um, to push into, or more accurately, push out of the range of influence of this guy. What I can do is I can maul this machine gun nest from behind. Because, you know, why wouldn't I want to do that? No, why would you do... Don't do that. Don't fucking... <laughs> Idiots. How dumb were they? Did you see that? Let me attack the machine gun nest that you access from inside a trench. By jumping over the trench. What the heck? Why would they do that? Like... Okay, yeah, we lose this. There's no way we continue to hold these objectives. This is my last pigeon. Oh good, that, that turret's been destroyed now, I guess. Alright. Are we able to just attack it without walking into dumbass artillery? Come on. What's interesting, okay, that's good to know. I can kind of slip around this side and do some useful things. Yep, but sadly I'm going to lose this. There's no... I have no relevant French units left. So I do lose this fight. Um, that's okay, we put in a good showing. For what is effectively our first serious attempt to do a historical battle in this game, I think that went reasonably well. Right? I'm not really expecting to win these fights. Uh, I'm just expecting to put in a good resistance. Ugh, oh, there's another turret there and I don't have any supply by which to do stuff. So they just, everyone just kind of gets mauled. So for the record what happens is everyone gets, is that these guys are going to run up no, they're going to stay in the trenches as long as possible, so when they pop out, they stand in between two fa two things and get mauled. That's how that works. Yep. Yep. Yeah, we don't... we don't do well in this. We are holding holding up in a corner, because that is all we have left to do. Wait, I have three stacks here? Why do I have three stacks here? Why do I have two stacks here? Where did they come from? Where are they going?
Should be able to maul these guys pretty fast. Um, sure, my guys just completely get rolled because they're not shooting. They're right. You can't shoot into trenches, can you? Uh, oh well. Whoever still is up needs to head over this way, accepting that you're all gonna die in the fucking uh, to this withering gunfire. Right, these guys are just all gonna get mauled because they don't navigate inside the trenches when I want them to. Like, what is the point of navigating inside trenches if you only do it half of the time? Literally, why bother? We're just gonna burn everyone down, because my guys aren't gonna make it, and that's okay. Wow, one of them made it. They're not gonna make this half the crossing, though. Look at that, there's five more French companies coming this way. And another French company there. And without enough smoke to, um... Actively... Here's a fun question, actually. Here's a great question. Did you all see that when uh, they smoked my turret, it was completely disabled? And that when, uh... My... When they... Or when I smoked their turret, it murdered all my guys? Did you see that? Like, 30 minutes ago? Just got here, you have no idea what's going on. Well, that's fair. Uh, we are playing the Battle of Verdun from the German perspective, and um, losing horribly. I think that's all we need. I think that's all we need to know, uh, is that from a, uh, a fight that should have gone okay, uh, did not, partly due to my tactical misplays, and partly due to things not working the way I thought they would work. Sadly, we have no one left, so literally we just have to let this burn, the clock burn down on this. Because I have no way to win and I have no one left. I have no supplies left, I have no nothing else left, and they weren't, they were giving me more supplies regularly for a while, and then they just stopped doing that. Which is always exciting. So, uh, good, good try, good try gang. Obviously, we'll get better at this over the next couple of streams. I'm curious to see what the defeat option does, whether there's interesting historical tidbits or anything else. 3, 2, 1, 0. Historic defeat. The assault has failed. We cannot push forward and secure for a foe. Must fall back and try again another day. Flurry smell can be used to better overwhelm an enemy's trench line. Yes, thank you. I tried. I did try to do that, thank you. And it just kicks us the menu. Alright, so. That wraps up our stream for today, I think. Uh, to anyone who just tuned in, AE4, apologies, but uh, so it goes. Interestingly, people don't seem to be tuning into this, sticking around for this. Uh, I'd be very curious to hear why, um, whether it was just a bad day or something else. Uh, but for those of you who did stick around, thank you very much. If you're just tuning in and have not yet, do consider hitting the follow button to see more World War One content in the coming weeks uh, as we continue to explore it. Right now, the game seems to be pretty much what we expect, but we are going to try a full campaign next time as the Entente, the, ally, the Allies, and we're going to go from there to see how, you know, it uh, uh, lets us uh, examine on a larger operational level what's going on. That means we're also going to be talking a little bit more about operations um, and the fact that, you know, World War I was not lines led by donkeys, unlike what uh, post-war media would have us believe. So, we will uh, go from there. Sound good? The, all the streams are now for this World War One deep dive are up on uh, the schedule tab of this page. So if you're watching here, uh, or if you're a checkout there, you'll see what's coming up, including some fabulous guests. Uh, and yeah, 
I hope I will see you all for some of those. But until next time I see you, regardless of when that is, I hope you do all have a very good night. This has been uh, Leo History. I'm Adam. Uh, we've been playing the Great War Western Front, so now, signing off. Okay? Ciao!